Okay. Okay. <laughs> we are live. Thank you everyone for waiting for that little technical difficulty there. Glad to have you all here. So May and I will be running these live streams for the next few weeks. Hi, May. Hello, everyone. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, Evolve was born out of a brick and mortar school called the Art Academy. And that is led by Kevin Murphy, who's been doing these painting live streams for us before. So he's taught here many years before making this curriculum available online through Evolve Artist. So the curriculum is the same and May has had a very similar education to what we offer through Evolve. Um, now, Kevin is not available for the next month or two, or two months or so, I believe, because he's doing these intensive summer programs. And so we have May, his apprentice, who will be making this figure painting from start to finish. All right, so <laughs> May, thank you for waiting for that long intro. And <laughs> why don't you start by telling, telling us a little bit about yourself and just, yeah, get us started. All right, hi, I'm May, I'm like the month. Um, I'm 19, um, I've been studying at the Art Academy for about six years now. Um, I started in like sixth, sixth grade-ish, and I started off with like charcoal and then moved into painting, et cetera. Um, I became, I wasn't really serious about art. I mean, I did it for a really long time, but I wasn't really serious until I started the apprenticeship, which is about two and a half years ago. So about halfway through my, um, halfway through my junior year. Um, and yeah, so these days during my apprenticeship, I'm mostly doing illustrations and um, like science fiction, fantasy illustrations, as well as portraits. So this is a bit of a departure from both, but I thought it'd be fun. So yeah, I guess before we start, um, I can explain my palette because that's probably going to be asked. Um, so I think you guys can see the reference picture, right? Yeah. So I have four colors mixed. Um, and so what we're going to be doing today is basically um, applying like what I call flats as like the first pass um, of the painting. And so what I did was choose, so the painting has like, three elements, right? So it has like the figure, um, the wing, and the background. Um, and so I chose like an average color for each of those um, subjects. So the figure, the average color was here, um, this one. And so I'd be like the darkest light. So it's like the most saturated, most like applicable color to like the overall figure. And then same for the background, which is like this very dark, warm color. And then this would be for the wing on average. And then I created this as a sort of admixture between the background and the wing um, to use like wherever I found applicable. And just generally because the first pass for flats, I like to keep all the edges as soft as possible because it's much easier to make hard edges on top of something than make soft edges on top of something. So I just have this in case I need to blend between these two since the values here are like pretty far apart. So. I'm just going to get started moving left to right because I'm right-handed and in case I need to put my hand on the panel, you know, I don't want to make a mess. So I'm just going to start with the wing instead of the background all the way over there um, because dark colors contaminate much easier than lighter ones. So yeah. Am I too far to the left? Or? Um, yeah, if you can move. Yeah, lean over just a little bit there. That's perfect. Okay, okay. So then we can see what you're doing. So I did thin this paint down a little bit um, because I want to be able to see the transfer through it. So I'm just testing its density right now. Um, it's like it's a little too thick, so I'm just going to add a little bit of medium to it. So I'm starting off in these areas where there aren't any lines, so I can kind of dissolve, I can kind of thin out the paint as it gets towards the line, so I don't risk just covering them up right away, since I'm still kind of figuring out the density. Right, so that seems to work. So it looks solid um, and even. I can get it to be even, but it's not, but I can still see the transfer through. 
So that's exactly what we want. Over here is where I applied paint first, so it's still kind of thick, so I have to work a little bit harder to spread it out so you can see the transfer. looking good so that's going to be this whole process this approach that you're taking is a, a layered approach right yeah so it's actually pretty different from what I've been doing for the past six months um, because like these live streams are going to be three hours at a time so I'm gonna have to oh, what did I leave that there? I'm gonna have to work in you know three hour blocks um, and I've been used to having like at least five to eight hours at once to kind of directly paint and just like render everything as I go, as I see it, and basically only do one or two passes on top of an area. Um, and so this will require some, some planning uh, more so than before. But yes, so this will be the flats and then probably next time I'll begin to add um, like a wider value range for the different subjects. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, may I? I've come prepared. Okay. <laughs> with a bunch of questions for you. Mm -hmm. um, and these questions, everyone who's watching, I would love for you guys to also share your answers in the chat. I think that'd be really fun. Um, you know, as, as, as we know, we've seen Kevin um, do these live streams, and he's just. Uh, <laughs> a library, a, a, just a wealth of wisdom and information. And, um, but we're thinking of just keeping these, this live stream just a little bit more engaging for people and maybe having more of a conversation um, so that there's a lot of back and forth. So I'll be trying to interact with your comments in more real time and, and I'll be talking more and um, feeding questions to May. And um, we'll just kind of take it from there and see how it goes. Um, so I thought I'd open up for to start off with this question here, which I think, I don't know how many people here in this live stream are familiar with Kevin, so no pressure on answering this one if you don't know who Kevin is, but I know that many of you do. Um, and one thing about Kevin, as I mentioned earlier, he's just, he's got so much wisdom on so much, more than painting, right? So for May, for you, uh -huh. and again, for everyone also in the comments, would love to hear your answers just um, chat and I can share them with May and we can have cool conversations. So May, what is one of the biggest life lessons you've learned from Kevin? Um, it's just like a lot of them are learned like through art and then just I realize they become applicable to like many many things. Um, I think the biggest one definitely is that you have like full, you have a lot more control over your actions and the consequences of those actions than like you would usually think of. Um, and like in painting, it's like, you know, you control what you produce, you control what colors you mix, what brush you use, what strokes you make, you know, everything is a conscious decision. Mm. Um, and that way, that's both enabling and also kind of scary um, in like <laughs> a lot of ways because you take full credit for everything you produce, right? Um, you're like, I mixed that color, I made that decision, I created this, this image, or, you know, I created this part of this, you know, you know what I mean. Um, mm -hmm. And then, but it's also like, if you make a mistake, if you made a misjudgment, um, then you have to live with it, and it's your full responsibility as well. Like, yes, I made that decision, and these were the consequences of my actions, and I will learn from them and reapply them to future decisions, you know. And it's like a very simple but also like a very powerful thing to kind of realize how far agency can take you like mm. of course in art that's been very empowering for me um like if i look at something that i'm working on or like an image that i'm trying to like replicate or um yeah just like reference material and i'm like okay how do i do this it's like i have to figure it out and either i do a good job and i can take full ownership of it and learn from it or I mess up and then I have to like reevaluate and then take responsibility for that and then move on and just keep reapplying that mindset to like everything. Um, so that's definitely one of the biggest things I've learned from Kevin. Mm. Um, and 
Yeah, I think another one more lighthearted is just uh, don't overwork yourself. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think a lot of my friends know this, but um, I've this summer especially and like the past semester in college, I've spent like a lot of my time painting and like turned down a lot of like you know like fun like social things or whatever so that I could you know clock in my hours and like complete my goals for the week or for the month and like work towards goals for the year in terms of like how many paintings I want to do down to like within the week like what stage of a painting I want to be at like by the end of the week or something um, and like it's gotten to the point a few times where it's like even when I'm with people and I'm like relaxing or just not painting I'll be thinking like I should be working like you know I could be getting this done right now but I'm not because I'm like slacking and hanging out with my friends but it's like that's like that's unhealthy you know because like I'm a whole person I'm not just a painter and I need to like treat myself as such um, mm. and Kevin definitely has like I mean I think for Kevin during his illustration days it was much worse because he just went for like two straight years without like ever not painting for like more than two days <laughs> yeah. or something that's why I laughed when you first said that. Yeah, so his burnout's like insane. And so um, even though like obviously he's my mentor, he's my teacher, he like wants me to be productive and you know get better at painting and dedicate time to it and everything, but he still like likes to check me on that and just make sure that I'm not going too crazy with it. Um, and so, you know, I definitely really appreciate that. <laughs> so mm -hmm. kind of finding the balance and what to expect from yourself and like not feeling guilty for not working all the time because your purpose as a person isn't to be like chronically productive but you know to live the most fulfilled and well-rounded life you can mm -hmm. not to preach as a 19 year old but you know <laughs> that's how I'm interpreting that's all right. it we're all figuring it out yeah <laughs> yeah that's cool Mm-hmm. Thanks. <laughs> I'm even asking myself the same question. <laughs> what biggest life decisions or life life lessons? Uh, there's a lot over the years. Um, I've known Kevin since I was 15 years old, which I guess is about 10 years or more. Yeah, more than 10 years now. Um... I think, yeah, definitely that sense of responsibility, like you mentioned before, is huge. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of a funny one for you. But... For me? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, don't try to beat the old man at the gym. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean, you asked. So. Well, you called him an old man, so <laughs> kind of got both of us at the same time there. <laughs> true. True. Yes. Yeah, the... There's been the stories, uh, Kevin brought me to the gym when I was doing the full-time program, which is essentially what, what May has been doing. And um, you, ca you have access to, to the studio here and you can, you're just, yeah, really focused on leveling up these skills, making these kinds of paintings. And Kevin had really encouraged me. I would think I was 17 or 18 at the time and Kevin knew it was, it was time for me to start hitting the gym um, using my, my body more and even... <laughs> Kevin just body shamed you. <laughs> <laughs> well, he Sorry. firmly believes in yeah. how shaping the body sh helps shape the mind too. Right. And so right. that's how he kind of convinced me to, to really jump in. And But yeah, see... But he was... You know, as, as much as we joke about me vomiting uh, after <laughs> most of our workout sessions together and him uh, pretending that he didn't know me when I did that... Um, <laughs> He actually was very, very gentle. Um, there was kind of this pressure of like going, going into a gym, right? And, you know, not knowing what to do or, or being, con you know, concerned about the numbers that you're hitting and everything. And Kevin was just saying, completely ignore the numbers. Like, you're just getting into this. Focus on the form. Just focus on what you are here to do. And if you really push yourself, then you win, right? Mm -hmm. And being better than someone else is really like an insecurity. Um, instead, if you're trying to be better than who you were yesterday, then that's really where the growth happens. And that's, that's well, there, yeah, there's a life lesson there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just being mindful of how I compare myself and, um, and getting excited over my own growth. And that's, that's been huge 
Kevin has pushed me in a lot of ways and challenged me. I think I shared my story a while back, um, but that was a big theme for me and, and just how I even became an artist was how Kevin was pushing me more than anyone else in my life and how that was somehow really encouraging to me. And, and so he, would, he kept raising the bar and he kept challenging me more and more. And there was a few times when I was thinking like, man, He's pushing me hard here because he sees the potential and then I have to ask like, do I want it? Do I really, do I really dive in and, and put in all my effort into this one trade? And, uh, and then making that decision to continue to persevere was really big. So I think just the life lesson of learning how to be resilient and keep pushing and keep, uh, keep going in the face of of your own failure, because if you're constantly comparing yourself to who you were yesterday, you do have days where you, you don't measure up to what you were before. And so being able to look myself in the mirror and still hold my head high and, and just keep working and keep focusing is definitely a big life lesson, I would say. All right, that, that was maybe a little more deep than necessary. <laughs> let's see, what, what do we have in the comments here? So uh, here's one from Jen. I've learned to just keep moving forward. So that, that's very similar. Have a plan, follow the plan, and do not second guess yourself. Um, Alex Tan says, hello, May. Hi, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, Sarah Price said, one of the best things I've picked up from him is that you get your best work done when you are relaxed and enjoying the process. Yeah. Um, let's see. From Eddie, uh, from art, I learned that art can be used to portray how life can be and ought to be, and that art can motivate the viewer to actualize the ideals presented in the artwork. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, I mean, I would love to have wings, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Actualize those ideals. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that is a big part of, like, why I got into, like, fantasy and, like, sci-fi and stuff. Mm. Um, it's because, like, the idea of, like, manifesting a vision, like, from my brain into, like, the world. Oh, yeah. Is, like, it's so powerful to me, and it's so satisfying at the same time. Um, that's like another big part of why I make like fan art, obviously. Um, it's like seeing your favorite characters who you're like emotionally connected to in like different situations and like that sort of thing. But yeah, definitely the, the actualizing part. Um, I feel that. Mm hmm. Yeah. So back yes. to the painting here, I'm watching you put in this, this kind of flesh tone. Mm -hmm. uh, grayish, yeah, peachy color, <laughs> yeah. um, into this wing. Looking at the reference, the wing looks pretty white and, you know, so, so what was the decision there to choose this reddish hue undertone for the wing? Right, so um, for the first pass, I like to keep everything as chromatic as possible, so like as high saturation as possible because um, it's always like, like a painting, Kevin likes to say like a painting can never have like too much color, right? And like I, always, I still have like lots of passes on top of it to kind of build away from this maximum chroma level so that, you know, values can be adjusted and everything. Um, and so I was looking at the wing and um, I was looking for like a kind of average color that I can work on top of um, that is, that as itself is like closest to every other color in the wing. Um, and so, you know, the obvious colors that jump out are like the really bright white um, towards the left and then like these dark shadows towards the top and then like these really bright orange hues like near um, the back and the shoulder, um, like where that overlaps. But um, like those colors really aren't applicable outside of their own like areas in the painting, uh, in, the, in the wing, right? Um, and so mm -hmm. I was looking at more of like the muted like shadows, like warmer shadows in like the white feathers um, 
not like overlapping the shoulder and arm where like all that orange stuff is, but like near the back. Um, and then a lot of those colors and shadows are applicable like up in the top left corner overall where a lot of the white feathers overlap with each other and create like shadow tones. Um, mm. And so I decided that this color was like the most applicable to the entire area of the wing, even though it doesn't like jump out as an obvious color um, that the wing should be uh, denoted as. So. Awesome, yeah. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who are in Evolve, this is basically following the block six technique in what we call speed painting, building it up in layers. Now, May, what is that painting behind you? This one? Yeah. All right, so that is a work in progress I have of one of my friends from college. His name is Carlos. I don't know if he's here. Um, but I met him um, through like this thing we have called Rutgers Misconnections, and he just reached out like, just kind of on like a very public platform like for the account, um, just asking if anyone would be down to just like meet up and just become friends, you know, because we're a really big school and it's always nice to change up company. And um, I responded and I was like, yeah, I'm down. And then, um, so we met up and we talked for a bit and I found out that he's really into um, like modeling. Well, not really into modeling, but he has experience modeling and like photography and like mm. is also interested in manga. So like that kind of art. Um, and so I was like telling him about like, how I'm painting a lot and I'm always like looking for models and stuff and he was like I would totally be down to model for you like for a painting and I was like that's actually a really great idea and he has this very distinct look about him I think he definitely looks like a model in my opinion um, and so yeah over the summer we just made a date for a photo shoot we had to change it a few times but we got there and um, I had this idea for him to kind of just be so I already have like two other portraits um, that I consider like portfolio worthy. One of them is very like casual and the other one is very formal. So I was thinking of something in between. So kind of, you know, like business casual, like a little bit regal-ish, but not like over the top suit and tie, but also, you know, not wearing like a hoodie or jeans or anything. Um, mm -hmm. And I thought um, Carlos and his like sense of fashion um, that I'd seen so far would like really fit that middle end of that spectrum and kind of help me show my range in my portfolio. Um, so yeah, we set up that photo shoot, got it done, um, and so I'm working on him right now. <laughs> cool. Obviously still in pieces, but. Yeah, yeah, can you step back a little bit so that oh. we can get a look at that painting? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so that's still in progress and it's gonna be kind of cool because I think you have two weeks to finish that or something. Mm -hmm. And so when we come back in next week to keep working on this winged figure painting, we'll see the updated version um, since May's painting quite a bit during the weeks <laughs> as well. Nice. Yeah. So, and then about this painting you're working on mm -hmm. in front of you, a uh, question from Robin. Is there a narrative to this piece? I noticed that there's only one wing, and is that an owl wing? Um, I just looked up angel wing, so maybe, I don't know. Probably like a swan, because that's typical. But um, angel mm. wings are, sorry, owl wings are pretty cool. They usually have more um, like patterns though. Anyway, um, there's not a particular narrative behind this. There's actually like a piece I did of another one of my friends from college. Um, that, which is like compositionally kind of similar to this. It's like a bit bigger, but he's like leaning back. And um, he also has like one wing. There's like this really intense light on his face, but like he's turned like three quarters, so you can't see his face. Um, and so I've always been, like since making that, I always wanted to, wanted to make a sort of companion piece to it. Just like, since that piece is very cool, there's like a lot of um, like blues and like aquas in it. So I thought it'd be cool to have like a smaller but like warmer tone piece um, to go kind of like pair with it. So I guess this mm -hmm. is that. There's not a particular narrative in my mind. To be honest, I just wanted an excuse to paint wings again. But <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and I just pulled up that painting mm -hmm. um, here on the live stream. Yeah. So, and actually, yeah, we can kind of go through and take a look at May's work. 
so that everyone knows what to look forward to. So this is that piece that she did, um, she just talked about. We also have this painting of this man um, sitting in a chair with like a draped blanket or something, these cool, mm -hmm. nice gold tones. Yeah, so that's like the more casual portrait I was talking about. It's uh, another mm -hmm. one of my friends from college. Awesome. And I also see the Pelt Merchant of Cairo. Uh, this is a master copy um, originally done by Jerome, I believe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, but this painting that we're looking at here was done by May. And for those of you who are looking forward to block eight, we do these master copies. So this is May's uh, painting of that. Let's see. Next one is Scarlet Rupture. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is funny, actually, I, I asked May, I was like, Can, do you have a name for this piece? <laughs> She's like, I don't know. Five minutes later, how about Scarlet Rupture? That's, uh, what, what did you say? I was like, it's, it's like mostly red and kind of violent. So I, I <laughs> yeah. feel like that, like, it fits well enough. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so she's done some a bunch of sci-fi stuff. Mm -hmm. um, here is a portrait of Gary, and I don't know how well everyone sees this one. To me, it looks like this this photo of this painting is a bit darker than it should be. There's a little bit more going on, so I apologize if you can't quite see um, the painting. But there's a little bit of uh, background in there as well. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's visible. My apologies. Another one of the jester, the jester mask. Did you, did you speed paint that one or direct paint? I did like a flat pass for like over everything. And then on top of that, I direct painted. So I guess like one speed painting pass and then another direct, and then like four direct painting passes or something. Awesome. Yeah. That was, I actually did that piece um, like after like a somewhat unsuccessful like personal piece like with my own photo shoot and everything um, because I was having severe imposter syndrome and Kevin was like, you know, like maybe you should just step back from all these like grand visions you have for paintings and just like reground yourself in like, you know, the technical uh, your technical abilities rather than like your visionary fulfilling your inner visionary. Um, mm. And so he was like, just render this one really well, and then you can just reapply um, your re revamped direct painting rendering skills to whatever you see fit in the future. And I was like, all right, I will do that. Um, and it, it actually worked. Like when he was first saying it, I was kind of like resentful because I was like, what do you mean? I need to be revamped, but you know. <laughs> 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 but it worked. So yeah, those music notes, I don't know if they can see the music notes, but. Like yeah. there are music notes on the, like printed on the mask and like the mask itself is like porcelain. So it's like a little bit reflective. So like, and it's like, you know, it's obviously a mask with like curves and stuff. So dropping in those music notes at the very end, I don't know if Kevin remembers, I don't know if he's watching, but like I was having like a full on breakdown putting those in at the very end. Cause uh -huh. I'd spent so much time on like everything else before it. Right. And, um, and like my hand was just like, shaking and I couldn't get it right and I was like I literally I got up I just did like three laps of like speed walking around the school like during class <laughs> and he was like man you need to calm down and I was like these music notes are not going to paint themselves Kevin and then um, <laughs> but then I, I figured it out so it's okay but, awesome yeah <laughs> yeah it's always good to kind of come back to those technical skills after a lot of like you said that visionary stuff and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just remind, just kind of, yeah, come back and remind yourself of those things. Um, Kevin just texted me. He said, you can tell May I'm watching. You're doing a great <laughs> job. <laughs> I'm so, okay, hi. <laughs> I, I hope you're feeling better at home. Kevin is suffering from a slight ailment in his respiratory system. That means he has a cold. I don't know, I'm speaking funny. But, um, <laughs> that's why he's not here tonight. I think also maybe he's tired of me, but you know. <laughs> here's a speaking of visionary pieces here's one called capture <laughs> some more wings yes i enjoyed that one a lot um it's not my highest quality piece but just compositionally i think it's i think it's just so fun 
Mm. Um, yeah. And those wings, actually, um, I couldn't, I really wanted to do this piece, but I couldn't find like a reference picture for those wings that were in like the right angle, like mm. in time for like everything else. So like I had like everything else but the wings like finished in the mock-up and I didn't have anything else to work on at the time because I wasn't good at like making a cue back then. So um, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna start the painting. And then so I literally had like everything done, um, like direct painted, like pretty much finished. And then um, I finally found the picture that I needed for the wings. And, um, and then what I did was use uh, like white transfer paper. Um, so that instead of like black, it transfers white. And then I just, did a transfer for like a print of those wings on top of like everything mm. and then just like painted those wings in like pretty much last so. Nice that was fun. Yeah, I thought of it as like augmentation surgery Because <laughs> that sounds cool Okay, yeah, so pretty I much like, finished with that color. I like Sorry. the uh, <laughs> the blue shadows in the hand up front and then you mm. can see the same blue tones in the hand further back and that kind of gives gives some depth there right yeah towards the end kevin was very particular about like adding in depth um like through like increased contrast and saturation like closer to us closer to the viewer and then uh dropping that off mm -hmm. so definitely learned a lot there Cool. Yeah, Alex said, capture is so dynamic. And Pam <laughs> said, love the water in that painting. Yeah, it really is nice. Thank you. The water took so long. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then yeah. here's, here's one more emergence. Mm -hmm. That's also a very nice piece. This one is much more subtle with its water there. Yeah. I painted that about two years ago um, to submit to this thing called the Da Vinci Initiative which is like um, like the kids slash teen section for um, the Art Renewal Center. It's like international like illustration, painting, general, general like painting competition. Um, and like for some reason during, the sum during that summer, there was like a storm or something, I don't know. Um, and like the power went out uh, in this like entire complex and so I was literally coming in and like painting during the daylight and I set up my easel like right next to the door so that like I could have sunlight and stuff mm. and um, like right before submitting it like Kevin like sat me down I was, I was literally like sitting on the floor and he was just like standing over I don't know why it came out like that <laughs> but um, that's how it was and he gave me like this speech about you know like these um, don't take the results of the competition too seriously because you know the judges are all very subjective every year and as long as you know that you did the best you could on your painting then that's what matters mm. I just I just remember that really well because in my head I was like wow this is such like a like a Jedi master Jedi moment this is crazy mm. it, was, it was cute um, <laughs> <laughs> and it goes back to that whole comparison thing yeah again. for sure yeah yeah oh um, I started with the, the color that I chose for the figure oh right and I'm still working on the left over here. And I think I'm going to leave the right side of that arm a little less dense because I think I'll be using the background color over that a little bit. And um, I'm still putting paint over it, but I'm just trying to make it less dense because I, overall I want all the paint that I put down today during the first pass to be even. So I'll have like two like half density passes in these shadow areas, hopefully. So everything, everything evens out. Um, and I'm not gonna paint the arm, any part of the arm or the figure or anything uh, with the background because I don't want it to, you know, blend in completely. Mm -hmm. So kind of just pushing those two edges together here. Um, the values are like really close and so is the color because they're both like really warm and kind of desaturated. So I don't need to make an admixture in between really. Mm -hmm. um, Here's a question for you from Bill. Hi, Bill. <laughs> Do you ever use pre-made plastic human models that like uh, mm -hmm. Kevin Murphy talks about, like using a dragon, for example? Um, I do have this pair of like male and female like 
um, plastic models that have like adjustable joints and stuff like that. And those were actually very helpful to me during, uh, Kevin gave me those to practice with during quarantine because I was doing like a lot of digital drawing on my own, but I couldn't find like good reference online. So I was kind of just making a lot of stuff up. And you know, that just looked, it just made really bad drawings. <laughs> and um, he was like, you know, if you want to get serious about this thing um, or like just produce higher quality things, uh, like from imagination, you should like practice with these actual models and have them be in like more dynamic stances and then you do studies of them and stuff like that. Um, so I, I actually did that for a while, but like in reference for like actual paintings and like photo shoots, um, I don't think I've done that yet, actually. Um, most of my reference is like stock photographs and then just like photo shoots of people. Um, and then for my looser digital stuff, usually I kind of compile a bunch of references for like a pose or I literally just use myself sometimes um, and kind of just set up like a camera with a timer. Um, so no, I don't go out and buy plastic models for things, for paintings or uh, like art in general, as of now. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that though. I mean, it's just like not how I've been doing it, that's all. Awesome, yeah. All right, should we ask another question here? Sure. <laughs> okay. This question is also available to everyone else to answer, so I'm going to type it in the chat as well. But May, of course, looking forward to your answer here. Mm -hmm. Do you have any painting ideas that you're really looking forward to painting one day? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know how many people are going to get it, but um, there are these two anime shows that I really, really like that have great visuals, um, great concepts that could be easily converted into like astounding imagery. Um, Attack on Titan and uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. Um, so I guess I'll give some background. So Attack on Titan has like, I won't tell you anything about the plot because that gets crazy. But um, <laughs> so there are lots of like large scale like humans, like, you know, like 20, 20 to like 40 feet tall. Um, and they're like horrible and like monstrous and eat like regular people. And it's set in like this sort of steampunk time era where there's like a lot of um, like metallic flying technology. Um, mm -hmm. And but like they live in very like rustic, uh, like rural landscapes. Um, and then, you know, so you have like flying people, giant fighting, fighting, fighting and flying people, giant <laughs> monstrous people eating people, all titans, and like um, gorgeous like large-scale landscapes. And then you have like, you know, all the uh, like philosophical, um, like political like ideas within like the narrative that could be very like um, interesting to illustrate. So mm. I definitely want to do like this, like a huge scale, like giant like fighting sort of illustration between mm. Um, like the titans and like the humans with like all their like flying gear and everything. It's like all dynamic and ah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, so I definitely want to do one of those. And then I do, I want to do another one for Attack on Titan with like a lot more to do with like the metaphorical, uh, like philosophical stuff and kind of convert like abstract ideas into imagery. I think that would be just so fun. Um, mm. Almost like Renaissance, like almost like religious, you know, I think mm. that would be really cool. Um, so that's Attack on Titan. And then the other show that I mentioned was Jujutsu Kaisen. Um, that one, it, there's like a lot of magic and like sorcery in that. And so um, every like character has their own like style of magic and like fighting style with magic. Um, and like, they're like really unique. They're not like the typical like, oh, I can fly and I say three words. And then like, I do like this generic, like lightning bolt power. Like they're like really <laughs> cool and like advanced. Um, and so yeah, an epic like fight scene for Jujutsu Kaisen is also definitely something I want to do. I haven't, mm. I'm not like too far into it to like get into the philosophical stuff, but I'm sure there's like a lot there too. Um, so yeah, two big fight things and one metaphorical religious thing. Um, outside of fan art, maybe like, you know, dragons, cause dragons are cool. <laughs> <laughs> like some dragon rider, plus dragon V, dragon rider, plus dragon thing. 
So, mm. yeah, very into fantasy, dynamic things, fighting entities. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that also seemed to incorporate some kind of, uh, like a, a second layer of depth. Mm. Um, right, like just like a little bit beyond just just fighting or just some sort of action. Right. Um, so that so yeah, so that that other like you said, what does he call it? Metaphysical piece or like metaphorical? Metaphorical. Sorry. Yeah. Very good. So is there a specific idea behind that, or is that just you just in general you want to paint metaphorical paintings? Um. Well, for Attack on Titan, there's... Well, I don't want to spoil anything. Um, <laughs> I see, right? Yeah. Um, there's, like, a lot of ideas of, uh, like, freedom and, um, like, the ends justifying the means and sacrifice and, um, like, how much someone can change from the past and how that change is... Uh, what's the word? I, I'm not, like incited, I guess that works. Like um, nature versus nurture, a little bit, or I guess, um, or just like like character development in general, mm. based on like um, how much someone knows, and their previous decisions and what they've learned from their previous decisions. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, I used to like do a lot of artwork just based on like songs and like the ideas like in the songs. So mm. I have a lot of. I mean, I guess I have experience. I wouldn't say like practice, but I have experience kind of converting like feelings and like abstract um, like narratives into like stories. I mean like visuals, often like narrative or symbolic. Yeah. Cool. So, mm -hmm. And then with like the fighting and dynamic stuff, like there's just, first of all, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Second of all, um, there's like, like if you take on something that like elaborate and complex, there's just so many like opportunities to like render such cool stuff, you know, like dynamic poses, like foreshortening, like metal, mm -hmm. um, like scales, fire, explosions, like teeth, blood, <laughs> sweat, like lightning, like there's just so much cool like stuff to render and then just like make look real, you know? Um, mm. And that's always fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Very cool. I sound insane. <laughs> no, not at all. Okay. Just checking. <laughs> <clears throat> no, you don't sound insane. <laughs> I mean, there's a reason why those shows are as popular as they are. Yeah. Have you watched Jujutsu Kaisen? I know you watched Attack on Titan. Um, I have. Nice. I watched the first season. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was really good. I haven't watched the movie yet, but... Um... You could tell that the artists making it had so much fun yes. with the fight scenes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And that's always just, like, you know, I might know a lot about art. I don't know much about music, but even though I'm ignorant in the world of music, I can still sort of tell when a band is having fun creating. It just, mm -hmm. it just, like, emanates and the whole, all of it, just, whatever they're producing just seems to glow. And that was the same impression that I got with Jujutsu Kaisen, that these people were just having so much fun um, creating and you know, getting exactly what they wanted out. And uh, yeah, that was just really cool to see. Mm -hmm. Really fluid animations and yeah. um, the compositions that they used to capture those those movements were really cool to me. Mm -hmm. So we got some answers from other people here. For, so from Sarah, she said, I currently have five I'm looking forward to, developing the skills um, to then complete. Mm -hmm. The more I learn, the longer the list gets. <laughs> yeah, I can oh, relate yeah. to that. That's how it goes. Um, Eddie shared, I want to kit bash cityscapes, spaceships, and other sci-fi models, mm -hmm. then make a series of paintings out of them. Hmm. Series are cool. And here's a question from Robin again mm -hmm. for you about the, the layered approach that you're taking here. So switching it up. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate on this layered approach? I'm, this is from Robin. I'm in block one. Okay. So that's block one of the Evolve program. Right. And I work in a single sitting. I would like to split my painting time over several days. Are gradients on edges an issue with this approach? Um, no. 
because so every layer, so like obviously these edges are, you know, they're all like very loose um, and that's the point. So like with every layer I do with this approach, I, the edges get like slightly sharper. So, but like I don't have to sharpen every edge as I go, obviously, right? Um, so I start off with like every edge being soft and the next one I sharpen some that need to be sharpened, but like some in the background maybe, I mean, I don't think for this one, but, um, but like I'm able to leave really soft edges in place and then sharpen ones that I need to. And I do the same, so it's like everything is like really soft and then some things are sharper and then some things are sharper and then some things are sharper and then you kind of like build them up until like at the very end you're just like rendering in like very fine sharp edges. Um, so the, all the gradients are like built into the process of, I mean into the layering. Um, yeah. And so yeah, you don't, that's like not really a concern. Um, yeah. I don't think for block one, is there anything to like split up over days? Because I think it's just like the um, you you can I don't know. <laughs> you, yeah you you can if you um, do one object at a time and and Robin I would definitely ask the instructors for this so May is she's not actually an Evolve student she's in Art Academy um, she's in the Art Academy here and there's some slight differences and so um, I recommend that you reach out to our instructors who can really help you figure out a situation that works for you but yes there is a way where you can split your painting time over several days, even in block one. So I would just reach out to them about that. Um, but that being said, yes, this block six, block six technique is really helpful for painting in multiple sittings um, and doing a little bit at a time. And also, if you take the sum of the hours it takes to make a painting in the block six layered method, then um, it's a lot less usually than direct painting. Mm -hmm. So you might find that this is actually a great technique for you if you want to do a little bit at a time in smaller sessions. And that's actually why, like for this live stream, we have, you know, about three hours to do each session. And I think, May, you were just saying earlier, you could probably <laughs> bang this whole painting out in two sittings if you just directly painted it. And yeah, for like 10 hours straight. <laughs> right, 10 hours straight. But, you know, we're, we're doing these live streams to engage with all of you. And so we thought, well, the speed painting technique, this layered approach is much more effective at doing a little bit for a three hour session and, and getting a lot of progress done in that time. And we can break it up that way. So, so yeah, so it's very nice for that layered approach. Okay. Um, let's see some comments here, reading through them, catching up. Mm. Yeah, Bill, about that whole, um, that idea of people enjoying what they're creating and how it shows, Bill said, you can tell when people are putting it on versus pouring feelings into their work. Mm -hmm. That's a nice way to put it. Um, Kelly said, I actually have some angels that I've been asked to paint and I have to put it off. Let so me do them. I'm kidding. <laughs> What's that? Let me do them. <laughs> uh, um, yes, she said, thank you for doing this. I can't wait to see how you do this. So that's cool. Um, all right, here's a question for you. Mm -hmm. What are your favorite art supplies and oil paints? Um, the only oil paint I use and have ever used is Old Holland, so, and they have served me very well, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. That simple. Yep. Um, and they also said, I'm interested in starting to learn this medium of oil paint. Very intrigued by everything that's required. So, mm -hmm. um, Mary Sanchez, you can, I can, I'll send you a link um, to get you started in oil painting. Um, we've made some courses for you. What May is doing here, she's, she's been training for quite a while, um, putting in lots of hours. Um, it's only been, I think, a, a year or so where you've been really serious. Um, about like two. Two years? Okay. Yeah, um, yeah so she's, she's at, a, at a different place than you might be. And so I'm going to... Ooh, nice catch there. <laughs> I tried. Um, so yeah, so I'll, I'll drop in a link for you to get started for oil painting for beginners. Just give me a second to do that. Okay, and then a question for you, May. Well, I'll wait until you're, you're situated. Let me just drop this link in. Is everything okay? All your references are right? Yeah, I just put them there instead. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. 
Okay. You ready for the question? Mm -hmm. All right. If you're going to cover the entire vast area and make it flat, why are you willing, or sorry, why are you filling in small lined areas and then just going right over it? So why are you doing this transfer and then covering over this <laughs> transfer? See, the trick is I'm actually not covering the transfer. Um, yeah. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I can see the transfer like very clearly through my paint. I've thinned it down with um, quite a few drops of oil um, so that like to you guys it looks solid, but for me working, working on it up close, I can still see um, like all the lines of the transfer. So um, does that, I guess that answers the question. Um, yeah. But like the main point of me doing like flats first is again to establish the overall um, color and value of each element of the painting so that I have like a baseline of um, what to mix from for each subject uh, in future passes. Yep. Yeah. But yes, I can see the transfer, don't worry. That yeah. was a mistake I made a few times when I was first learning this technique, um, either mixing the paint too thin or too thick. But I think I've mastered the, the Greek yogurt uh, consistency, <laughs> as Kevin likes to put it. He also mm -hmm. says sour cream sometimes, but I have no experience with sour cream, so I say Greek yogurt. <laughs> no hate, just different life, you know. <laughs> <laughs> hate life. Yeah, and you can see how this approach, it requires a lot of understanding um, and a willingness to simplify the painting down to this level because so far she's only, she's, you know, she's going to be covering this whole painting with, what was it, four? Yeah. Four colors. And, you know, looking at that reference, that's a pretty, there's a lot going on there. Um, but when you have that understanding and the clarity of what you're doing, Starting with simplicity really helps to get the ball rolling and um, start really making progress. And what's really helpful here is that she's going to start getting a sense of the those underlying impressions, the overall impression of how the painting is going to look, and then she can start managing her relationships from there. So mm -hmm. it's it's a very powerful and effective approach. And to start this simple... Um, yeah, it's just a great, great, great way to start. Because you think like, it's like, oh man, I have to paint a wing right now. That's <laughs> that's so daunting. Or I have to paint this this back, right? But if you're just breaking it down and simplifying it into, okay, what is my next step? And finding the overall color and value for the whole wing. Um, once you've trained your eyes to be able to do that and to find that relationship properly, then this is a great way to to just get started and not not be so daunted. And it's part of the reason why I think as artists, and maybe you can weigh in on this, I think, you know, when we follow like a step-by-step -step process like that and, and kind of break it down, sometimes we'll finish the painting, it looks incredible, and we ask ourselves, wait, how did I do that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Because we just took that one step at a time, and it's sort of like going upstairs, you're just taking one step, one step, one step, and then you look behind you and you realize you've gone up a couple flights, and, and the, your perspective is totally different. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, definitely a lot of moments like after a long painting session where I like sit back and I'm like, I just did like a lot and it looks really good, but I have no idea how I got there, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, usually just mixing the right colors and knowing what you're looking for as you're applying them like really helps. Um, and then you said something pretty important earlier, like about relationships. Um, and yeah, like the main purpose of like splitting up the image into these very simplified like areas and colors is to establish like the relationships between the colors and values of each like component of the painting. Um, and then from that, from there, like within every subject, you can use this as a baseline to establish other relationships to like other values and colors. So instead of kind of just like shooting out in the dark um, and comparing it to nothing, you have like an overall base, which helps a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's also good for just making sure that you're mixing the right colors and values. Um, so you're not like deviating too far. So like if you are deviating too far from like the original color and value, you know you're 
you should like double check yourself for sure. Like unless the lighting's really dramatic or something, you know. Um, but yeah. Mm -hmm. And Sarah is asking, the paint looks so dense. How well can you see the transfer through it? Really well. Um, <laughs> yeah, you should pay me a visit. Maybe you can see. No I'm kidding. <laughs> um, no, I can. I assure you, I can see it quite well. Um, How far back would you have to step to for the lines to disappear? Would you say? Um. Can you see them from where you are? Not really. Not really. So I guess where Daniel is. Um, <laughs> so that's what, like six, seven feet ish. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. But like you can you can see I'm like going over the same area like a lot of times and um, that's just to both smooth out the paint and then also make sure that I can see the see the transfer through it because my brush right now is like stiff enough where it can pick up paint if I like press a little bit harder so I can do that if I need to if I put down too much paint at first but um, mm -hmm. not really having that problem because I added enough oil which is good. And Mary is asking, do you use traditional oils or water mixable? And we use traditional oils. Um, yeah, we teach with traditional oils. We do not use water mixable oil paint. Mm -hmm. I use everything that Evolve uses, so nothing yeah. special. I've never tried any other oil paint. I've never had any need or incentive. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I've got more questions. I have a whole list of, of questions, everyone. <laughs> but I'm kind of curious. I'd love to get some thoughts of what your questions are for May. <laughs> right? Here's an opportunity to, um, you know, see what see what the education is like. To see what it's like to be in the prog process of being an up and coming artist. Um, you know, we often are listening to Kevin, who has just years and years of experience, but May has this very, it's right in front of her, it's all happening at this very moment, and so um, would love to hear your questions for May, and we can, uh, I can send those questions over to her. Um, here's a question for you from Alex, Ann. Hi, Alex. <laughs> what is the benefit to using traditional oils? Um... It's, I've never had a problem with it. I mean, do you mean like, does he mean like oil paint, like as a medium or just like? Yeah, traditional oil paint. Oh, So okay. I, I can I can jump in. So if you compare traditional oil paint to say acrylic or um, watercolor, oil paint is the most versatile and it's also the most forgiving, so um, those those two things are really really valuable. And and then there's kind of a, a softness and a lushness to to oil paint that the other mediums you don't quite get. Um, so I mean, there's there's you know conversations upon conversations about what different mediums do and everything, but that's sort of a simplified version of answering that question. Yeah. Um, and then maybe even I don't you know tr traditional versus digital. Is another discussion as well, right? But oil paint, you can basically, you can yeah, you can just do so much, and, and you're you're really un, unlimited in a lot of ways of yeah. what kind of texture you want to create, what kind of feeling, mm -hmm. impression, um, and or style you want to go with. Yeah. So I guess I I kind of have a take. Um, yeah. So like. I guess just like oil versus anything else first. I mean, I've tried gouache, acrylic, um, watercolor. Um, the problem with all those is that they dry way too quickly, first of all. Second of all is um, like they mess with the medium you're working on, like as you work on them in progressive layers. Um, and like by that, I mean like it'll, like the, the paper or like the board or whatever, it'll stiffen often um, or it'll, like curl or like you can actually like tactilely feel like the difference in uh, like thickness of the of the of the substrate that you're working on um, because like the medium like dries in such a way um, and so the main problems with that is just obviously it becomes harder to work on an uneven surface 
And then for the first one where it dries too quickly, it's just like, there's, at least to me, like there's no way of like making gradients, which are such an important like visual aspect of like any image that you're kind of trying to create in like a realistic way. Um, and that's because like you can't have two like colors like stay wet and then like put a, an admixture in the middle that also stays wet and then blend on top like between one color in the admixture and then the other color in the admixture as they all stay wet. Like everything else just that I've worked with that I listed off it just dries way too quickly for that. So the only way to go about creating any um, sort of gradient is to mix like every single color in between to the best of your ability, which is like, mm -hmm. and, and then you have to like stack them like so precisely. And then if you make one mark out, like, well, you know, it'll dry in like two seconds and then you'll have to paint over it and remix it exactly as best you can and then paint over it as best you can. And then that way you're building like another two layers on top of like that one area of the gradient. Um, and to me that just like, you know, it, it just doesn't, it's so, it's just such like unnecessary like labor and it's and um, it's very often imprecise, and it takes like a lot more time, and it doesn't create as good of a product. Um, and then for oil painting, like you, like as we mentioned before, like you can layer, um, you can work in layers, and it won't mess with how things look. And in fact, you can actually use that to your advantage by um, like varying uh, paint densities and opacities to allow like certain colors to show through, and like build up building up saturation or values and things like that. So yeah, definitely like a lot more versatility, mm -hmm. um, a lot more um, flexibility and literally just more efficiency in creating gradients, which I think is one of the more important aspects of like creating any realistic mm -hmm. image. Um, yeah. So and that's there, my take. There are <laughs> ways around, I know with acrylic, you can do certain things with acrylic to make it look like oils. And it's funny, and that's actually what I like to point out. Is, <laughs> you know, like if you look online, there's so many search queries of how to make my acrylics look, look and feel like oil paint, but you'll Use never see yeah. someone <laughs> searching how to make my oil paint look and feel like acrylic. Right. And so there's definitely just like a, yeah, a lo level of lushness and quality that, that mm -hmm. oil easily delivers without extra effort. And another way that I like to put it is, um, with oil paint, because of that, because of the drying time is, is isn't quite as fast, and you can adjust the drying time for oil paint too, to mm -hmm. make it dry within within about an hour. I think is, is like the fastest. Yeah, probably. around yeah. there, um, and it can depend on different pigments and things like that. But um, with oil paint, you get to finish the sentence, like you, if you're trying to say something with your art, and you have the time to communicate what you want to say and and put a period at the end of that sentence and say, okay, I'm done. I, I said what I wanted to say. With acrylic, it's almost like you're trying to speak under a time limit and it's like as if maybe you're, maybe let's imagine that um, I'm trying to communicate something with my art, but there's a door in between me and the people I'm trying to communicate to, my viewers. And as I'm speaking, that door is closing. <laughs> and so maybe while I'm speaking, I'm seeing that the door is closing, it's closing, it's closing, and so maybe I have to start speaking faster and faster in order to quickly get that thought out before the painting changes on me. And so it just adds a whole other level of complexity. So um, I made a video all about how, at least in the realm of learning, oil paint is actually a much more effective um, medium to start with, to learn how to paint in general. Um, it's a bit of a controversial statement. A lot mm -hmm. of people like to start with acrylic, but um, if you're willing to commit and you really want to learn how to paint, then I can't recommend to start in oil. And then I would also say have a process for, for painting and learning. Um, I wouldn't jump into it alone, um, and that's also gonna save you a lot of time. But that'll be, a, you combine those two things, a process with like, and an education with oil paint and um, yeah, you'll be moving forward pretty quickly. Okay, we got some questions. Um, let's see. A question from Robin. Have you had any experience with acrylic underpaintings? Uh, no. <laughs> um, I mean, like this canvas, oh, sorry, this panel is like slightly towed with acrylic, but that's not like an underpainting or anything. Um, I just, I've just never tried it. 
Um, I, there are definitely lots of professionals who do that, um, and their work turns out incredible. Like Donato, for example, um, he's like a really big uh, fantasy illustrator. Um, but no, I don't have experience with that. The most I've ever done with acrylic is just like, you know, middle school like art classes, and then like this kind of like toning. So <laughs> I would not be an expert. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Next question. Are the paintings you're working on for clients or are they a part of a collection? Um, they're, uh, right now I'm just trying to build a portfolio in uh, both illustration and uh, illustration. So they're not for clients at the moment. Um, but you know, that's the goal is to create a portfolio that will generate clients. So yeah, um, I wouldn't say it's like part of a collection or project or anything. Just kind of a professional, almost professional, hopefully professional portfolio. <laughs> yeah, I do have um, mm -hmm. a series that I'm working on, the last one. Uh, it's like three um, like hypothetical science fiction book covers and it features me and Kevin in like paintball gear and like paintball guns in like various dangerous, uh, stressful situations. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I guess you could count that as a collection. Um, I call it a series because I think that sounds a little bit cooler. But no, it's just overall for a portfolio that will generate clients, hopefully. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I moved on to the background, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Starting from the left again. And I'm leaving that little gap between uh, the wing and the background so I can throw in that admixture so it won't be just two very different colors and values uh, like mushing on top of each other mm -hmm. because that is suboptimal. Um, yeah, and I'm not going to go and do that right now because I want to work with one color at a time instead of like half cleaning this brush and then because there's only so much you can do with the medium and then like working into another color and then contaminating it and then like being like, oh no, it's contaminated and then going back and forth. I'm just going to use this and then probably since this color is really dark, I'm just going to switch to another brush afterwards to make that, to mm -hmm. apply that admixture. That'll help avoid contamination. Yeah. Um, so Carmen has noticed that you're putting your brush into this thing at the bottom um, and she, she okay. says um, it's paint, but it's actually, yeah, so that is actually, <laughs> um, is that alkyd? Um, alkyd and linseed oil or just yeah. alkyd? I think it's... Alkyd and linseed oil. Okay. Yeah, it's transparent, so. Okay, yeah. So <laughs> it's a combination of alkyd and linseed oil, most likely, or, or just alkyd. Um, either way, so that she's not going to be working on this painting until next week, so. Um, yeah, it's funny. You don't know whether there's linseed oil in that or not, but. Hey, it works it'll for be me. Fine. Yeah, it'll be <laughs> fine either way, mm -hmm. um, since she won't be working on it for another week. So, um, yeah, so she's dipping her brush into that medium, which has some contamination from the other paint that she's been dipping from. Mm -hmm. And then she's going into the darker paint color uh, to grab it. So that's how she's keeping her, uh, her paint fluid as she's going. Yeah. Also, this brush is like really stiff, so that helps too. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think this mixture has a little bit more oil like relative to the amount of pigment than the other two colors. So I have to like go over some areas to make sure they're dense enough. Um, it's okay. Yeah. It happens. <laughs> Here's another question for you. Mm -hmm. Did you go or do you currently go to university in order to learn art and whatnot? I'd love to know your journey. I do not. Um, I go to Rutgers for cognitive science with a concentration in uh, visual perception. I don't go to art college or anything. Um, I believe that the apprenticeship is more than enough. Um, actually, one of the main reasons why I chose Rutgers is because, so that I could continue. I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do art professionally or full-time or anything, but I didn't want to like seal it off as like an option forever, which is what would have happened if I like went out of state or anything. Um, and you know, I didn't want to lose uh, my friendship with Kevin and just access to art in general. Um, just because I graduated. So, um, yeah, I, I was, I never planned on going to art, college for art or anything. 
um, because I was at the school and I was seeing, I mean, I've been seeing everything up on the walls around here and I don't think that there's an education that costs like 40 times much what this one costs <laughs> out there that could give me a better result um, that is worth it. So I'm going to college for something vaguely related to art, you know, visual perception in like a technical sense. So um, I understand how to help me better understand how people like perceive images in general. So that'll help mm. me create more convincing ones. Um, like, you know, related to depth and color, temperature, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I, I do this pretty much during the school year, during the second semester at least, I was painting whenever I could between classes and sleep, so yeah. Awesome. And here's a question for you. Mm -hmm. How much time do you expect this painting to take you? Um, well, definitely within the live stream windows we have. So like within 24 hours. In my head, I'm counting it as like 20 because I'll be like talking kind of distracted. Um, like for this, this live stream, it's not that bad because it's literally just like flats. So I'm just applying one color in like very large areas. But yeah. um, I'm assuming that once I go into, the, you know, in future uh, streams, I'll definitely have to uh, slow down my work as I talk or talk less or that sort of thing. But I think I'll be able to get it done within the 20 to 24 hours I have. Um, like Daniel mentioned earlier, I was, you know, sitting in front of the reference material, mixing the paint, and I was like, man, I could just finish this in two sittings, but 10 hours each. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so like 20 hours should be fine. Um, it will definitely take me a lot more time to, like outside of painting, to plan it. Um, like the different passes and everything, and make sure that every pass I'm putting down um, facilitates the subsequent one as best as possible. Um, so mm -hmm. that might take a few extra hours in between mm -hmm. because I'm used to like very long sessions of just direct painting and bulldozing my way through paintings. So. <laughs> <laughs> Do you find yourself thinking about your paintings that you're working on during classes or non-art related things? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, like I mentioned earlier with like the not working too hard sort of thing, like there was like a few months, even like sometimes now, a lot of times now, um, like I'll be doing something else and be like, hmm, I got here like three hours ago. In three hours I could have painted yada, 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 or, you know, um, <laughs> sometimes, definitely in classes for sure. I had, so last semester, like the only in-person classes I had were like lecture classes and that's just like a recipe for distraction. Um, if anyone's being honest, so, <laughs> so like what I would, I mean, I, I paid attention and took notes, but like, um, a lot, so in order to manage, um, taking classes and also painting, I, um, stayed about like a week ahead in every class for the syllabus, um, mm. so that like every lecture was more like review rather than me trying to consume new information. Also lectures are just like, like they don't work for me as like a, as like a learning, a means of learning. Um, I prefer reading and taking notes and watching videos and that sort of thing. Um, having someone talk at me while I sit completely still is like, just, it doesn't work. Um, so I would learn the material first and then get it like reviewed in lecture. Um, so I didn't have to pay like a thousand percent attention. Um, and so I'd have my computer open like with my notes on one side and then I'd also have my notes for like painting on the other side. Um, Cause I was trying to like keep paintings, keep track of how much time I was spending on my paintings. Um, like planning out the rest of the week, like how many hours, like what hour blocks I could get throughout the week to go in and paint. Um, and like planning out new paintings, like timings for photo shoots, lining that up with Kevin's schedule. Um, yeah, so um, in short, yes, I think about painting a lot when I'm not painting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I relate to that. And my, at, my friends will tell you that too. Like even yeah. when I hang out with them, we'll be like, yeah, so they'll be like, how are you? And I'm like, I worked on this and this and this and I have to work on this and this and this. And I'm like, well, slow down, please. I'm like, <laughs> okay, sorry. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I myself am guilty of, I'll have like a, a full day of creating or working on maybe a composition or something or, or maybe I was painting and wrestling with something and then, um, I like, I, you know, let's say I had some social event in the evening and I'll go to the event 
and my brain power will still be stuck on that problem or still be stuck in that creative world and I'll just sit there and you know <laughs> somewhat socialize and um, kind of space out a little bit and mm -hmm. my friends kind of just they know they kind of know what's up and they just let me do my thing which is nice mm -hmm. um, and then of course if they ask me like what I'm thinking about then it'll turn into a <laughs> two-hour conversation and their eyes their eyes start to glaze over <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah. so like caught up in that world of creating mm -hmm. It was really bad for me during uh, quarantine because like I had high school like online and Zoom classes, which basically meant I would just draw on my iPad for like five hours straight while, you know, Zoom classes were happening and then take a nap. So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, or yeah. lives rent free in my head. <laughs> That's one way to. This density is not, it's not being nice to me, but it's okay. It's just a first pass, so. <clears throat> and May, if you wouldn't mind, just try to be a little bit aware of the camera angle behind you. So right oh. there is, no, you're good, right? Well, don't, don't go too much. Okay. <laughs> Want to make sure you're comfortable while you're painting. Yeah. Um, but just try to keep that in mind. Uh-huh, sorry. You're good. Um, here's a question for you. How did you set up the photo session for the wings? Are they applied or photoshopped? Um... They're not real. Um, they're an image from Shutterstock. And basically we just did a shoot for the figure. And then I went on Shutterstock and I looked up angel wings. And I found one that I liked. Um, I, I like these because they're like a little bit more ragged looking. They're not super like well tailored and like perfectly angelic. Um, they have a little more character, a little more texture. Mm -hmm. um, and so yeah, I grabbed those. I cropped them out um, and I actually like mess with them a little bit in Photoshop. Um, so there are these things called blending modes and they affect um, how, they, they like change, in the most basic sense, they change what the image looks like um, in terms of like opacity or um, like brightness or saturation and that sort of thing. And uh, they affect like, usually you use them to add like kind of special effects, um, like unnatural contrast or brightnesses or high chroma to things. And so I actually duplicated the layer with the wing on it a few times and just, um, I have like a different blending mode on like each layer. So when they were stacked on top of each other with like varying opacities that I played with, um, they created this kind of light translucent, but also like I had areas of like high chroma, like that orange around the shoulder and back. So yeah, photoshopped, it's not real, um, but pretty simple process. Yeah, yes. you mm -hmm. use Photoshop quite a bit for your more visionary pieces, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Like that capture angel piece was like, oh, the science fiction ones take a lot of Photoshop. Um, mm -hmm. because like the entire background, it's not just like a complete image that Shutterstock will just hand to me very nicely. Like I have to grab one for the sky, grab one for like the ground, some like, so usually like there's some like up close elements like rocks or like more ground or stuff. Um, and like for the Scarlet Rupture one that has like dragons in the background, those are actually, maybe that's what the plastic model question was about. Those are actually mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> statues that I stole, well not stole, I like saying stole because it sounds funny. Um, uh, I borrowed from um, the restaurant that I work at on the weekends. Um, it's like this like upscale like Asian place, and so they have really cool decor, including these like cool dragon statues. So I asked my manager if I could borrow them for you know shooting for a painting because that's like a very normal request. And she was like, "Sure, just don't break them." And I was like, "They're made of metal. I don't know how." And she was like, "Well, you know, just don't break them." So mm -hmm. I shot those, and then. Um, yeah, and then I cropped and like rotated them in funny ways and put it together. And then another thing, like after you gather all these images that like work well together in a background, you have to like crop and then like arrange and then like adjust the colors and like values of like everything as well, um, so that it all like harmonizes as an image, which can take a very long time. Mm -hmm. So. I don't. I forget what the question was, but I I use yeah. a lot of Photoshop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And where did you learn Photoshop? Was it just practice, or did you go and take classes or something? Um, just practice. 
Um, it's all very basic stuff, just like cropping things out, adjusting colors, um, values, um, like moving layers around. Like it's nothing really advanced. Um, it's just like a lot of applied basics. Um, I mean, Kevin showed me like a few things, um, and then I practiced them a bunch. And yeah, I, I never took classes or anything for Photoshop. And I mean, they don't really seem necessary to me because like the internet exists. So yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. But you know, if you want classes on Photoshop, by all means, <laughs> feel free. <laughs> I'm not an expert to speak on Photoshop and Photoshop classes. So I'm using this background color on the sh really dark shadows in that arm. Um, and I'm kind of just establishing like how far I want this to go, like the shape of that shadow and how much area I want this color to cover. So it's kind of like a sketch right now. It's a bit darker. Was you the right side? Was it hard for you to learn how to do a photo shoot? Um, it's like, so there are like two parts. Like one of it's just like, the first part's like setting up and then, so like lights and everything. And then the second part is like the actual shoot. The actual shoot can be really awkward, but like only if you make it awkward. Um, so just learning to like not make it awkward um, is like a little bit tricky because you always feel funny kind of like ordering people around to like do very specific strange movements, especially like in the science fiction fantasy stuff. It's like, it's like, can you arch your back like a little bit more and look terrified? You know, it's kind of <laughs> weird. Um, yeah. But like, you know, as long as you don't like, don't take yourself too seriously, but also like don't seem like embarrassed all the time either. Um, because then they're not going to take you seriously and then you're not going to end up with any like genuinely good photos. Mm -hmm. um, you need so, to make them feel comfortable. Yeah, so make them feel comfortable um, like performing a bit, but don't make them feel so comfortable that like they don't even try and kind of just like goof off. So that's like a delicate balance like a, as a dynamic to establish, usually with like strangers. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and then the actual setting up part, um, I don't have too much practice with it yet because Kevin doesn't trust me with like heavy equipment. Um, but <laughs> um, like conceptually, I think it's it's pretty cool because the way he describes it to me is like, um, I mean, I, I don't I forget exactly what he says, but like in my head I've translated it to like kind of sculpting um, the image with the lights. Um, so like you, so you have to think about like what each light, depending on its like position and temperature and like intensity, is going to do to the subject in terms of like what shadows it creates, how dark those shadows are, like what their shapes are, and also like the complementary like lights. Um, and so everything feels like a very fine like multifaceted balancing game um, in terms of like determining what shapes you want and figuring out how to get them. Um, and there's like a lot of just like brute like visualizing like logic. Like if you move this up by like this angle, like the light's gonna come down this way, so the shadow's gonna get like deeper in this place and then like recede in like this place and like stuff like that. Um, so it can get mm -hmm. kind of intense, but it's like, I think it's a really cool mental exercise. Um, so I'm still working on that part, but I think I'm definitely better at making people feel comfortable, but not too comfortable. <laughs> Like during the shooting process, I mean. Yeah. I know Daniel definitely has more experience with like doing whole photo shoots than I do. So. <laughs> yeah, no, you're, you're spot on though. I've been working on this, uh, this, uh, this one painting, it's a commission and 
there's quite a lot of figures in it and um, you have to be very careful about keeping the light consistent and mm -hmm. um, for this this one I'm working on now I have to um, it can be tricky because you can get you might like with with that many figures like so I have, there's like seven or more figures in this painting and I might have set up the composition for the light to be placed in one spot but then when I'm in the photo shoot working with this model on the spot and if the light isn't falling in the way that I wanted it to that I thought I thought it originally would I then have to think very flexibly and it's like is it do I move the model do I move the light source mm -hmm. um, you know what can I communicate to the model to for him to fit into you know really close into this the initial sketch that I had um, uh, Bill's asking me what what am I working on? So it's a it's a commission of a uh, a painting of Jesus sleeping during the storm. So if anyone is familiar with the uh, the story of Jesus calming the storm on the on the boat, um, and so it's yeah it's this this going to be this painting of um, Jesus sleeping there and all these disciples um, stressing out over the storm and everything. Really excited about it. But Bill, I'm gonna. I'm going to do my best to record that whole process. That's actually one of the reasons people have been asking me, you know, how come I'm not um, doing these live paintings? But I'm actually going to be working on that painting, and I'll be recording the process. Um, but it really needs to get done, and I can't, I can't space it out over um, a live stream session. But I will be trying to record that process. I'm switching up the question here from this is a question from Mary um, about the apprenticeship. And um, so, yeah, so first is, like, how did you, how did you become an apprentice? Ah, uh, the origin story. Yes, the origin story. <laughs> Villain arc. No, I'm kidding. Am I? No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so, um, where do I start? All right, so, like, when I was growing up, it all started in the very beginning. Um, so I, I've always been, like, into drawing and, like, art and stuff. Um, so like throughout elementary school and middle school, I was always like known as like in my grade as like you know the artsy kid or whatever, and um, I'd like been taking art classes for like a very long time like since I was like two. I kind of bounced around until I was around twelve to until I found Kevin, um, and like I wasn't like you know the best in the school or anything, but um, I wasn't spending that much time there and I wasn't taking it very seriously, so it didn't really like matter. So most of my ego about art came from um, the people in my grade um, constantly just kind of like referring to me uh, or just like um, designating me to be like the really the kid was like really good at art or whatever just because I like did it a lot and because I was like very creative with it in terms of you know just enjoying doing very fantasy stuff um, instead of like flowers or still lives or whatever. So for some reason, people value that like a lot, and so I really took it to heart. So basically, I thought it was like some sort of art big shot until um, like sophomore year, um, October of sophomore year. Um, at that point, I'd already done uh, Kevin's um, foundation program like over the summer. So I'd learned like up to direct painting, and I'd been working off the table and stuff for a while. Um, so you know, I was like educated um, enough to be making like high quality stuff. But I wasn't doing it um, because I just, I hadn't decided that it was something I wanted to prioritize and like put effort into. Because mm -hmm. um, I was like, well, there's so much stuff going on with school and like art's something I've always like been good at and like enjoyed. I want to just like enjoy it, you know? Because at the time I felt like school was like the most important stressful thing in the world. So art was like this kind of mental complement to that as like intentionally a place where I didn't use mental bandwidth, which is like really horrible to say. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> So, and then, but I was still had, I was still carrying around like this ego of like being good at art or whatever, even though at this time it was like completely unmerited. Um, it was just kind of sunk cost. Anyway, um, I go to this National Portfolio Day thing in New York, and it's like this event where a lot of um, like art schools from around the country, like America, and then also um, a few from like the UK, I think, um, like sent representatives over, um, like admissions representatives and to kind of look over like high schoolers, um, like portfolios and kind of give them advice and stuff. So it was all people like in sophomore to junior year. Um, and I was like, you know, I was like, I'm so good. 
<laughs> um, I'm gonna get so many compliments, even though I don't try that hard, and I'm super cool, yada yada. Um, so I show, <laughs> so I show up, and um, you know I have like a couple paintings that I did like from imagination, which was like a horrible idea at the time because I didn't know what I was doing. I, I want to make this very clear. I was very bad, okay? Like I, <laughs> like, I was educated, but like Kevin, the way Kevin puts it, he's like, oh, like she was bastardizing like the education, and like mm -hmm. I used to like be very angry at him for like telling people that because it's a very ugly word, but he was right. Um, and so I was carrying around these like really bad paintings, and then a few drawings I'd done at home, like with pencil of like like robots or something, because I was like, oh wow, lots of mecha and detail. They're gonna love this. Um, and so and and then like. You know, I did not get many compliments, and I mean, people didn't like rag on me or anything because that's like kind of not allowed these days. But um, <laughs> like, they were like, "Well, you know, you have like a lot of work to do." <laughs> um, this one guy pointed out um, that I never have any like significant backgrounds in any of my work, um, and he was like, "You're basically just wasting the space on your substrate um, where you could be conveying more meaning or." Like attempting to like flaunt technical uh, like capabilities or like whatever, um, and yeah. So I came back from that event like very discouraged, and I was like, "Wow, guess I'm not that cool." <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> and you know, at the time, because I the the town I grew up in is like very uh, like academically oriented. It's like very academically competitive. So even in sophomore year, people were talking about like, oh, like internships in college and like all that sort of thing, like career even. Um, we were like planning out what clubs and positions they were going to get in order to like get into this college to do this major to like get this job. Um, like not everyone, but like, you know, it was like pretty common. Um, and so I was like, wait, I, don't, I have no idea like what I want to do, like what I like, what I'm good at. Um, anymore, um, and so mm. I kind of just stewed in that for a while, and I was thinking, mm. I was like, well, there are a bunch of things I don't like, and there are a bunch of things I like, but I don't think they'll make any money. Um, and then I was so, th and I came back around on art, and I was like, well, Kevin seems to be doing pretty well, and um, <laughs> and he has a really cool backstory because I knew he had like, you know, he was doing illustration and portraiture, like, and even like book publishing before he like opened the school and went to education and everything. And I was like, there's like a lot of really cool like fields open in art um, that like this one guy has gone through. So like if one guy can do like all these things, then you know, like there's like a whole world out there that I could be good at if I like decided to, right? And I was like, well, I don't. So I kind of like sat around and just like wondered to myself, like, um, just like, is this like a choice or like am I just like out of it? You know, like have all these years of bastardization just like ruined my chances, or like, am I do I still have like redemption? And mm -hmm. um, and then I think after about like a month of like wallowing, I like went to Kevin and I was like, do you think I could like be a pro at this mm -hmm. at art? Um, because like in my head I was like narrowing everything down to like what I liked, what could make money, and like and yeah. <laughs> was it hard to ask him that question? It was embarrassing, yeah. <laughs> I think, um, mm -hmm. because like um, he kind of just been letting me like do my thing. Like um, he'd like asked me in the beginning, like a few months after the after I finished the foundation program, just like you know, like he was like, you know, you're like not doing what I taught you. And I was like, I know. And he was like, okay, you know. Um, and so I was like, you know, like you're right, <laughs> and. Um, mm. I'm not where I want to be. I'm not where I could be. I'm not where like everyone else is at my age, apparently. Um, and but like this is something that I think I would really want to be able to like make myself more of like through. Does that make sense? Just like yeah. just become better at and commit myself to because it's something I like really enjoy and um, and I think I have. And I think it's just like it's like it was that weird conversation where I was like, I'm really bad, but I think I have potential. Which is like a really weird thing to have to say to someone. <laughs> um, and mm. yeah, and he was like, he he was like, you know, I'll give you a response in like four business days. No, I'm kidding. Um, he was like, <laughs> <laughs> he was like, um, he, he he like thought about it for a while, and he was like, yeah, um, I'm glad you came to that realization, but like I'll think about it because obviously it's a very big ask for. 
you know, this amount of availability and um, commitment. So, so you asked him yeah. for, for help? Yeah, I was just like, do you think I could like become a pro? Like, like would I be worth investing like, mm. like a higher amount of effort into than like the average student here? Mm. Mm -hmm. um, like looking towards a career potentially, um, not as just like, a, like an extracurricular activity. Um, and he came back and he was like, yeah, I think, I think we can do this. I think you can do this. I think it'll be worth it. And I'm glad you, I'm glad you took this initiative. And so, yeah, we got started. I went back to grayscale um, to like relearn the fundamentals and stuff for my first painting during the apprenticeship. But um, yeah, definitely the first few months were very humbling, but also like I really enjoyed them because of that. They're sort of like, I feel like masochistic is not the right word, but it's like, it's like very satisfying to like make myself unlearn and fully reapply myself to something that I knew was like valid and correct and would get me places, you know, mm -hmm. and to give up like all pretenses of like myself knowing like anything. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of just being like, okay, like Kevin, like, you know what's best. Like I will do like everything in my power to do as you say and just take me there, you know, um, mm -hmm. or like tell me how to take me there. Um, so yeah. That's it's very long, long-winded, but basically I got my ego shot through and had to cry for help, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's deeper than that. Yeah. Yeah. That is so awesome. Thank you. And, oh yeah, and about the backgrounds guide. That day, I since that day, I've always put backgrounds in like everything I create, except for this because you know it's I have to do it on the stream. But wait, what was that? Like the guy who was like, oh, you like never do backgrounds. You're like wasting space. Oh. <laughs> and then like since then I've like, in everything I've been able to do, I put crazy backgrounds in. Mm. I mean, unless it's like a portrait or whatever, but you know, just like sure. as an illustration or something I want to be like fully captivating. I like mm -hmm. make a point of that. I think about that guy every single time I paint up, pick up a paintbrush. I'm kidding. But <laughs> people, people have asked me that, like, why are your backgrounds so complicated all the time? And I'm like, well, it's because of this one guy from like that, the, School of Arts in Chicago or something. Mm, mm -hmm. That was a lot of like unnecessary information. Sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, it's good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's a really, really awesome story. Yeah. I wouldn't call that a villain arc. I'd call that more <laughs> of a superhero arc, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> the origin story. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Thanks. And the, the commitment to all of that you know, mm -hmm. and humility, you know, that seems like it's a theme there. Of, yeah, that's the first thing I thought of, is just like going to someone that you know has all this experience, all these answers, and saying, like, can you help me? You know, right. it's a hard thing to ask, right. but it's completely changed the trajectory of where you were headed. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I think that's, you know, people love to help. Like Kevin is doing this to to share and give back to the world, you know. Right. And um, it's easy to forget. We we can kind of just assume that we would be um, a burden on someone or something. Yeah. But um, people want to people want to help. People want to make a difference. And I mean, shoot, that's why I'm that's why <laughs> I'm sitting back here behind this computer, <laughs> talking with you. You know, it's yeah. like. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, of course. But yeah, it's you know it's just awesome to see these these dreams come to life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely love it. Um, yeah, Marion, to answer your second question, um, do you usually have to pay if you want one? So yeah, so the full time. So in this, it's it's broken down differently here at the school. There's uh, once a week classes, and then there's also this full time program. And Kevin. Um, he basically, you, he puts the trust in you. He gives you keys. Um, you pay a thousand a month to mm -hmm. have full access to the studio and access to Kevin, and so that's like a big commitment of time yeah. um, and using this space. Um, and then the Evolve program is kind of, I guess, almost in between that, or it's just a different setup mm -hmm. um, where you know, if you're not here in this physical place, you can get the same education. Um, just on an online platform, so all of that guidance and mentoring and everything is available. Um, and that price tag 
right now is 2500 and that's access for life. It's not like a monthly thing. Mm -hmm. um, so there's kind of like different levels to it. Um, but yeah, so Mary, if you're looking at getting an education and um, if you're here in New Jersey, then definitely come give this, this school a visit. Um, if you're elsewhere, then take a look at Evolve and um, just, yeah, just jump, just kind of get a sense of what other students are doing through that and everything. All right, so another question from Robin. What would your dream commission be? I'll jump in here oh. since I've actually been thinking about this one for a while. Um, it's actually kind of an odd question to answer because mm -hmm. if I have like a, a dream commission versus a dream painting, like if I have a, a dream painting in mind, I would mm -hmm. just do it. Um, right. I wouldn't really wait around for someone to commission me for it. Mm -hmm. So I can't say that I actually have like a specific dream commission um, for that very reason. Like if there's something that really compels me and strikes me and I feel like, uh, you know, I must, I must get this out, um, then I will simply make the effort to do that and put other things aside to get that done. Um, and, and there's other avenues of, you know, if you create an original painting like that and then there's many ways that you can make money off of it through prints or selling an original or things like that. Um, but I would say my niche tends to land in biblical narrative paintings. So this commission that I'm working on right now is like an, an ideal example of um, a commission that I love to get. Um, so I know actually I've been, because I've been focusing so much on Evolve, I've actually turned down a few commissions here and there. But uh, when this painting came through, this commission, about this uh, painting of Jesus sleeping in the storm, I thought, oh, this is just right up my alley. And uh, I've pushed other things aside to make this one happen because I'm just so excited about it. But what about you, May? What's your dream commission? So the difference for me between commission and actual painting is that like someone sees you and wants you to make the mm. vision. So it's, it's about you, you know? Mm -hmm. And like this, I don't know, I hope that doesn't sound too narcissistic, but it's like, no. like they see you as an individual for your potential to make their vision come true. So it's like, it's like matchmaking, you know? Um, so my dream commission, <laughs> mm, tough. Probably like, I have like two. Probably is like, first is like, like a commission for like an Attack on Titan like poster or something. Like mm. if, if they're like ever like making a movie or like rebranding the manga covers or just like doing something and they want to like, pr like promotional content for them. Oh my God, I would be over the moon. Um, and then the second one is like if they, did like a redo of like the Percy Jackson covers, like the book covers. Oh. oh my gosh. I would love to do that. They're actually doing one right now, but it's like very stylized and kind of graphic. So, so maybe that means the next generation, they want something more realistic. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, fan art <laughs> <laughs> for me. But yeah, the painting you're cool. working on now is super cool. Like seven figures, that's so, wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Um, Rich, I see your question. How is my style different from May's style? So rather than try to explain that with <laughs> the English language, I will simply share my <laughs> website with, with you. Um, because, yeah, <laughs> just a little bit easier here. So let's see. Very true. So these shadow shapes I'm laying in right now with the background color on the figure, obviously they're like very chunky. Again, I'm just kind of figuring out where I want this to go. But after I lay them in, I'm gonna go in with a smaller brush and some admixtures and definitely make it a lot nicer. So no worries. I kind of want to cover more, but also I'm scared. So. <laughs> You want to what, cover more? Yeah, like this whole area, I'm thinking about it. I just worry the paint density will get too lopsided between different parts mm. of the painting, uh, different parts of the figure. I actually was not aware that you were planning on doing both the flats and the shadows um, oh. in this one pass. So cool. Yeah. Make some good strides from this one session. Mm -hmm. By the way, it is 8.50, just so you know. We have until 10? Uh, yeah. Okay. 
Okay. So one like hour. that's an hour and 10 minutes left. Okay. That is manageable. And if we have to go over, um, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But we will try to be timely for, for everyone so that they're not missing out. Mm -hmm. Kevin's probably like deeply upset at what I'm doing right now. <laughs> Deep, deeply upset? Why do you say that? Like these gradients are horrific. <laughs> you can feel his doing? eyes staring at you right now. Are you puddling? <laughs> uh, no, I don't know what to do. No, <laughs> hmm. yeah, Kevin likes to talk about this thing called repurposing. So usually that applies to colors. So if you can, just like using one color for like multiple elements of a single piece helps to harmonize it um, and provide like even more reference for future relationships between colors. Like how something is relative to the background and the shadow in here, you know. Um, I can make that relationship now, now that I'm putting this in. Also, I'm so surprised, I, I forgot all about this um, since we started the stream, but we have a raffle to do tonight. And uh, since we're awkwardly right in the middle here, we will do this at the end of the stream. <laughs> um, and so we can all look forward to that towards the end. I have a, I found something online to give us a little spin wheel. It'll be fun. Let's see if I can um, pull this up. Give her another little sneak peek. Whoops. Is it for um, the painting from the last live stream? Yes. Cool. Um, it's not showing through, so I'm going to see if I can. There it goes. Yeah, so there's a little spin wheel there. Um, got the people's names in for entering. So this, yeah, this was from the last live stream. And um, this is of, um, in the last, last live stream, Kevin did this. Uh, little portrait demo lesson, painting a sphere and a portrait at the same time to show that the process is exactly the same, um, which is really cool. And so now he's raffling off and giving this painting away. So we'll be doing that at the end of this, this session here. Cool. Back to May. Okay. Um, May, when will your apprenticeship end? Um, that's a, uh, sad question. Probably sad when I, question? Probably when I graduate. Um, yeah. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, I'll have access to this space up until I graduate and then I have to like be independent and stuff, you know, so I think that's like fitting. Um, definitely that's like the latest time it'll end. I don't know if there would be a reason for it to end before that. Um, I hope not. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, Kevin has been saying that I'm kind of, I mean like, Throughout like my more recent paintings, I've like gone to him for, you know, kind of like confirming my thinking of like how to, like rent how to, go about doing a certain area or like a process or something. And then he's just started saying, you know, like you need to figure it out because you know what you're doing, you have experience, um, you have a brain, you know, like <laughs> you don't, you don't like need me that much anymore mm -hmm. to like hand right. you through things. Um, yeah, you're very independent at this point, I would say. Thank you. <laughs> um, so in terms of like, um, I, I mean, and I think like his thing with me at this point is just like, I just need more like experience with independence so I can just like make my own experience instead of going off of his. Um, and so I guess, yeah, that's where I am. Um, <laughs> but. I think just like the overall like relationship that we have as like mentor and student, like we'll never really go.
go away unless he gets really mad at me or something. So <laughs> <laughs> I hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> so I don't think it works like that, May. <laughs> <laughs> I should hope not. Um, so yeah, latest is graduation. Hopefully not officially before then or anything. Cool. And do you have a website? I don't. Uh, I have one, but it's not published yet because I want one of the paintings that I'm working on now to be like on the front page of it, and I'm not done yet. So I'm waiting for myself to finish that painting so I can publish the site and be proud of the front page. Awesome. So yeah, when that when that is up, we will definitely share it. Mm -hmm. um, you do have an Instagram. Do you want people to follow you on Instagram? Sure. I would love <laughs> it if you follow me on Instagram. I'm um, <laughs> Lunic, L-U-N-I-C, and then two numbers, seven, seven. Um, that's my art account. It's like most of my digital work is there. I don't have many of my traditional uh, oil paintings because like photographs for those are harder to get. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I tried. I just tried a chat command that I'd set up, but it looks like it's not working so for everyone I will grab her um, her Instagram link here you can see um, she does a variety of um, you do both digital and oil as well on your Instagram mm -hmm. yeah the digital stuff is mostly fan art from like quarantine <laughs> mm-hmm and I use Procreate on the iPad Air before anyone asks. <laughs> but I used to have an iPad Mini, and that was so so difficult. Um, for last last Christmas, I think, yeah, I got a iPad Air just for Procreate, basically. Mm -hmm. So thanks, mom. <laughs> Do you have an opinion about Impressionism? What do you think of people like, uh, I might butcher this name, Fetchin? 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 Not, I don't know who that is, I think. Yeah, I just had to look him up. Okay. What, what's your take on Impressionism? Impressionism is cool. I don't do it. Um, <laughs> I think... I mean, like, as an art movement, I, I took, like, a little course in art history um, last semester. And as an art movement, it's pretty cool because it was, like, very based on, like, what if instead of doing what we've been doing for the past 500 years, we do, like, something else instead that's more based on, like, how we feel um, and how we perceive, like, an object as a... How we, how we interpret, like, what we see as, like, a visual concept rather than, like, a like a technical, like, tangible object. So that's like a cool concept. Um, and I mean, like, personally, I just prefer realism as like a form of art. Um, I just think it demonstrates a lot more technical capability, which I, which is, you know, more like quantifiable to me. So I'm able to just like directly appreciate it without making myself go through like the artist's like philosophical and like emotional state. Um, but I mean, I like it, I respect it. Um, it's just not as like intuitive or like direct to me, and I feel that it's demand for um, subjectivity and kind of going inside the artist's head in order to give it value um, makes it a little more difficult to directly appreciate. But that's mm. just me. There's nothing wrong with impressionism. <laughs> oh mm -hmm. boy, that was not good. Do you like comic stuff like Marvel? Um, yeah, a lot of the, the newer Spider-Man artists are like really, really good. Um, definitely like comics in general um, as like an art style and as a concept. There's like a lot of obviously like dynamic stuff, lots of narration, um, creativity with composition. Um, it's a very creative genre, I think. Um, I mean, I don't know like a lot of names or anything, but just overall. Good stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not an expert. I do like Marvel though, very loosely. I have like one oil painting, like fan art piece of um, Bucky, like the Winter Soldier. 
it's like one of the first frames from his movie, um, like 2019 or something. I don't remember. Mm. I worked on it like last summer. That was fun. I remember like talking to Kevin. And I was like, I've only ever done like fan art on, on um, like on my iPad, like digitally, and it's because you know I like to save the indulgent stuff for like lower quality, and like less time. He's like, why don't you make like higher quality fan art? Why are you just you know, kind of denying yourself that opportunity. And I was like, so true. So I went and did it, and it's pretty cool. It's still not done. There's like this like light on his vest or something um, that like glows, like this weird shade of blue that is not in any other part of the painting. So I just never like mixed it by itself <laughs> um, and like did it. Mm -hmm. But if I didn't tell you that, you wouldn't know. So <laughs> I tell people it's done. Just realized I should probably cover the panel first before like trying to do these gradients. So, mm. and if you wouldn't mind, just watch your shoulder there. So oh, yeah. Right now you're good, but right there you just blocked it. Is this I'm okay? I'm looking from the the left camera. Oh, oh. Yeah. this yeah, is good. Can, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. The camera is slightly off screen on the other one, mm -hmm. so I've been showing this one. It is nine o'clock. Okay. How do you feel? We've been two hours into this live stream already. Um, I feel like I've talked too much about myself. <laughs> it's like a little weird because I feel like I'm being a bad conversationalist, but I realize that like people are just asking me questions. So. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm like, I was a lot more nervous in the five minutes leading up to going live than like now. So mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty comfortable kind of reevaluating my decisions, but <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Everything is workable because I have layers and time, so. Mm -hmm. Not feeling awful or anything. But I am keeping in mind that like, it's much easier to talk this time because you know, the. The past is like a lot simpler, so mm. you're not gonna be like, wow, I'm so good at live streaming. Like, no, you're just putting down three different colors. Like, it's, it's good. <laughs> so. Looking forward to being challenged with the next few where I actually have to like render. <clears throat> and talk at the same time. Yeah. Well. I end up talking to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what are you saying? No, you're good. I just, uh, I mean, if you need a moment, you know, mm -hmm. you're like, hey, I, I need to think right now. I can't talk. That's fine. Just let me know. Mm -hmm. Thanks. I think you're doing great, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I just, like, preached about, like, life for the first, like, five minutes of this. <laughs> just, well, like, I, I opened up that. with that question. Yeah. Life lessons, let's yeah. go. Just went straight deep into it, yeah. Yeah. We're like, who is she? <laughs> <laughs> who does she think she is? That's crazy. Do <clears throat> you need water or anything? Just let me know. Mm hmm I think I saw some coffee. Oh, all the ice is melting. How's everyone doing in the chat? All right, good. So, uh, yeah, how's everyone doing? Let's, uh, let's get some feedback here. <laughs> Everyone's like, this is terrible. I have a whole list of questions, everyone. So 
Um, I can just keep firing away questions here, or if you guys have your own questions for May, we can ask those. Maybe we want a little bit of time to, maybe you all have some music that you're listening to, maybe you're painting along. Uh, what are you guys doing right now? Let's hear your thoughts in the comments here. Also, while we're at it, if, uh, if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That'd be much appreciated. Robin said, loving it, nearly my bedtime though, 2 a.m. Oh, wow. I appreciate your dedication, Robin. <laughs> I'm honored to have your 2 a.m. company as I'm applying three colors to panel. <laughs> mm. You should sleep soon though. Sleep is very important. Uh, I'm being a hypocrite for saying that, but you know, it's still important. <laughs> um, and uh, Interesting username here, Trump2 Motion Picture Soundtrack said, we're good, watching this is like magic. How are you doing that? So that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Magical. Oh, magic. um, Natasha said she's filling orders, so that's cool. Seems like business is going well. Nice. Linda said, this is captivating and May is wonderful. Aw. Aw, thank you. <laughs> and Bill said he just finished the painting, so he beat you to it. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> and Sarah said she's working on a block four painting in the Evolve program while I'm watching. Nice. And it looks like Darkstar Creations just jumped in. Oh no, I missed so much. Hey everyone. Hey Darkstar. Hi Glad Darkstar. To have you. Darkstar is recording her Evolve student journey on her own YouTube channel, which is pretty sweet. I feel like I remember when Darkstar first like jumped in the chat during one of Kevin's live streams, like before they joined yeah. the ball. Because I remember they, were, they like asked a bunch of questions or something, which is pretty cool. So I know who you are. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I've, I've just heard your username a few times because I've been here during uh, Kevin's live streams a lot. So. Yep. Oh, and Mia's sketchbook uh, also jumped in. So she's also recording her journey, which is cool too. So yeah, people are interested in the Evolve program, just go see what our students are doing. And here's a question from Carl. Um, I'll answer this one. May, during your apprenticeship, what is, different, what is different between it and working through the Evolve program? So May isn't as heavily involved with the Evolve program, whereas I've kind of seen both, both worlds. So um, once again, so, so May has access to this whole uh, studio school um, so she's coming in here, making these paintings, um, and she gets to, you know, have um, time with Kevin to, you know, when she's working on something, Kevin will come over and give um, specific advice here and there. Um, she went through a, the same curriculum as everyone else, so she went from block one all the way to, to block eight. Um, a couple of, you know, slight adjustments um, since Kevin is working with her directly. Um, but really, really similar. All of this, the same techniques, the same approach to breaking everything down. It's all the same. Um, the, the online nature of it, um, they're actually both similar in the sense that it's self-paced. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. um, May that isn't committing to a number of hours. She comes in when, when she makes time. Um, you know, more or less, and it's actually the same with Evolve. So however much time you put in is really what you're getting out of it. Um, and um, so yeah, they're both self-paced in that, in that way. The, in the Evolve program, we, we really built it around this, the same idea of the apprenticeship and, and full-time. Apprenticeship full-time is kind of the same thing um, yeah. in the school. Where it's basically like, okay, how do we how do we make this training available online, but still, like, and give all of those that guided mentoring aspects, and still make that still available. So, um, on the one hand, in person, Kevin could be standing right behind you, watching the the individual brush strokes that you make. Yeah, which can be put some pressure on you for sure. Um, so there's some benefits to that. But what we have done to sort of um, make make that similar in the online version is we have one-on-one -on -one meetings. Um, every single painting assignment gets reviewed and critiqued by an instructor. 
um, and that that review and critique is a very specific language that Kevin has designed around those critiques. So it's all all kind of evenly disseminated, and it's all constructive. It's objective. It's very technical, um, and so you're still guided at every step. Um, a lot of online art programs will kind of give you some video software, and then you just go through it. Um, and in those, you would decide, you know, when you move on to the next module. And I said that the Evolve program is self-paced, but actually when you submit an assignment, you can't move on until an instructor has looked at your work um, and given you the green light to move on to the next thing. And that way, it's very guided. And we, because of that, we give the, the feedback within 24 hours. So it does happen very quickly, but we make sure that everything is being looked at, really making sure that you're understanding the material in the same way that um, Kevin in the, in the in-person school will be making sure that every one of his students is getting the education and really getting it. So um, yeah, hopefully that kind of gives you an idea. We, we send um, all the art supplies as well um, in the online version so that you're taken care of in that sense. And there's also, there's a whole bunch of links. Um, if you look at the description of this live stream, you'll see some links that you can go check out to learn more about the Evolve program. All right. Um, okay, for this one is from Jim White May. Mm -hmm. During your art education, was there a particular skill that you struggled with? Uh, I think something recent, maybe. Um, I think, oh yeah, I had, I don't think there was ever like a particular skill, but like sometimes during the process of a painting, I'll like get caught up in something and then like be like kind of like overwhelmed if something like isn't going right. And so I guess like the most recent occasion of something very fundamental like not going right was like January, like this past January where I was working on like this portrait of Kevin and there was like, this really bright light in the background with like a lot of fog. And so there was like this really bright, like white, almost white circle. And then it grades out in like very bright blue all the way down to like almost black. And so it's like this really big, sprawling, colorful gradient. And like, I could not <laughs> like, get it right after like, like three tries. And um, that was like, that was kind of, that was very embarrassing. But um, like Kevin just like, sat me down and he was like, okay, so gradients are just like one color going to another one and like a lot of colors in between. So if you're really struggling with just like um, finessing like the edges between the colors that you're putting down, just make more colors in between and then just like literally stack them if you have, if you have to. And so I calmed down, I did that and it worked. So um, I don't, I mean, I didn't like forget how to make gradients, but like there are moments where like in the middle of like a process, you don't like recognize like the very fundamental skill that you're applying to like a more complex subject. Um, so you can get kind of caught up in something. Um, but I think, I mean, gradients, hard edges, um, color mixing was never really a problem. Um, yeah, I guess sometimes I still struggle with gradients um, because I have to, remember to make like, like physically make admixtures um, sometimes instead of just like letting two colors like sit very cozily next to each other. Um, and so I forget that gradients like outside of facilitating like smoother edges and turning form are also ways of like adding in colors potentially um, where light meets shadow, um, kind of contribute to how like an object or area looks overall and mm -hmm. Um, so sometimes I forget to do that because I'm not thinking, I'm not thinking of it as like a whole image. Um, sometimes I just look at it by like the parts. So it's, you know, good to be reminded mm. as I'm working. So I'm just going to drop in the background a little bit into the darker areas up here in the wing. Kind of just let them diffuse. Would you mind stepping over a little bit? Yeah. Thanks. Sorry. So you're putting that into the wing right now? Yeah, so awesome. for like this darker area. And what size brush are you using? Is it a filbert? 
It's an angle brush, right? It's a three quarter inches uh, okay. S Simmons, I think. Mm -hmm. Just like the biggest angle brush, like here. So. <laughs> So as I'm doing this, I have to make sure the paint is staying um, thin enough that I can see the transfer through it, since there's like a lot of feathers and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of wiping that away and then pulling down the paint up top. So I'm going to prioritize seeing the transfer over um, like the exact color or value of the paint or anything over there. So. Uh, Bill is asking, what is the size of this piece? I believe it's 18 by 36, is mm -hmm. that right? Yeah. And then Trina is asking, um, um, this might be in reference to a previous conversation, how did the painting of Kevin turn out? Um, pretty well. I that was the first time I used this process of um, like flats and then shadows and then lights, and so that way, like the paint was a lot denser and more even overall um, across the entire canvas or panel, um, and so that was like one of the main problems I've been running in, uh, into before with previous paintings, is I was like using a lot of glaze. Um, rather than like opaques because like they make smaller changes and so I felt like it was like safer. Um, and then I was also using like a lot more passes because like things were transparent with glaze and um, so paintings were like taking longer and not looking as like solid and so there were a lot of places where I could kind of like justify like inadequacies by um, saying that it was like, oh, I was just trying to like improve like this color very slightly or like add this in very slightly or, you know. Um, and so Kevin was like, cut the crap, direct paint. And I was like, okay, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it was a, definitely a learning experience. Um, and I've improved a lot since then, but um, it was like this one, it didn't photograph well, because I think there's this one area where I messed up the density. So I don't think it's in uh, what, Daniel can show you, but. Wait, say that again? It is one or it is not? I don't think, do you have it? The portrait of Kevin? It's like, the background's like really bright blue. He's like mostly in shadow. He looks like Batman. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I only have the uh, Scarlet Rupture. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the painting is like here. I is think. it? It's like in the back in like, you know where like my the pile is of like my paintings? It's like over there somewhere. Okay, I'll take a look. Okay. I'm gonna sure. jump off audio for a second. Okay. <laughs> You'll know it when you see it. <laughs> okay, that was probably a mistake. Um. Uh, on the other side. It's under that like empty frame. Probably. There's like this whole stack of paintings. It's um it's a bit smaller. I think it's like eight eighteen by twenty-four maybe. It's a landscape. But yeah, I knocked that entire painting out in one week because I got COVID and I was like quarantined and the school was like closed for break and um, so, like, no one else was in here, but I was still using safety precautions and everything. Um, and I was able to just, like, knock it out in, like, six sessions or something, like, every day. So that was really cool. It's like, wow, I like moving through paintings fast and directly. And so I've been using that process ever since. Uh, yeah, yeah. You can show that if you want, it's okay. I'm not gonna explain, so <laughs> you wait till you see it. <laughs> I don't know why he keeps that here. I mean, I know why, it's just like, I, it's okay. Which one do you wanna show first? Um, I mean, they asked about Kevin, so you can show Kevin first. And, oh, oh, do you want me to do it? All right, which camera? That one? Uh, yeah, give me a second. Yep, you're good. 
Yeah. So this is that giant gradient I was talking about. And like on this side too. Here, hold on. So if you can step closer towards your painting for us. Yeah. And then tilt the painting down, like yeah. more vertical. Keep going. A little bit more. Yeah. Canvas not picking it up super well, but gives you an idea. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, so then what, what May was laughing at a second ago, I was asking for your, she, she wants to show this place. other painting. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but we've already shown everyone her really good stuff, so hopefully it's okay. Yeah. Um, so this was um, the painting that I was like in the middle of before, ooh, before going to um, that National Portfolio Day thing and before like doing the apprenticeship. So basically like the last painting I did before the apprenticeship. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so bad. There's like, there's, I didn't even do, I didn't even have any reference material for this. Um, and it's like all glazes and there's like no admixtures for anything. It's just like paint, transparent paint pushed around. And that's all I, that's all I have to say. Um, yeah, I think this so proves the point. I, I'm not talented. Um, mm. Everything I've done is through like, work and hours and commitment and not having too big of an ego. So, mm. so that was, yeah, that was your starting <clears throat> point mm -hmm. when uh, you came to Kevin and asked for help and completely transformed your work. <laughs> it's cool. Thank you for sharing that. Uh -huh. that. That was the cry for help. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, just to make you feel a little bit better about yourself, man, I'm going to show everyone your portfolio again. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's fine. <laughs> so this That's is, fine. again, these are the different works that May has already completed. You can see the the quality is just <laughs> on a whole other level. Yeah. I don't know, maybe one day I'll like re redo that concept of like the angel and the fire in the jungle or something. I don't even know what I was thinking, but um I think that might be cool if I like remade that at some point. Yeah, and, that would be. And it has wings and fire, so you know, it's cool. Um, it's still the same person. <laughs> um, uh, but it, yeah, maybe. I would literally just title it like the remake and only you guys would know, so <laughs> <laughs> like what that means. It's a powerful message, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's encouraging for the people who are on that, who are at that tipping point, you right. know, who, who might know that they need help, but are too afraid to, to get it, you know, or yeah. maybe are struggling with, I think, I, I, you know, I think identity is a big part of the, the journey, you know, and like mm -hmm. recognizing that your skill isn't tied to your worth, you know, and right. that you can develop skill and it's not, it's not something that you're born with and yeah. um, it might seem intimidating at first, but when you recognize that that means that you can grow and you can express the things that you want to, it's, yeah, super encouraging and just a little bit of humility and uh, a willingness of like, you know, how badly do you want it? You know, you yeah. wanted it so badly that you went to Kevin mm -hmm. and uh, you were ready to commit and you have, and it, now the work shows. So it's really cool. Thank you. All right, everything is covered. So I will not be making everything better. Um, like there's some areas in the background um, where the paint isn't even. So I'm applying some more, hopefully help that. Um, I'm going down to a smaller brush to work inside the figure. It's too, I think it'll be fine. So this is just an admixture I made between the background color and the, um, and the base color for the figure. So I literally just took like the same amount of both and then mixed them. Sorry, would you mind showing that again? I didn't oh. have the screen on it. Yeah, that's fine. So this is just an admixture I made between the base color for the figure and then um, the background. So I just took the same amount, like 
mm -hmm. and just mix them. So. So just smoothing out a lot of these areas where I just directly put the background color onto the figure um, because the brush I was using was really big and chunky and I was only using like a color that was quite different. Mm. And it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to not be messy. <laughs> Um, I'm not trying to add too much variation or anything, just smoothing out the overall area, making it more solid overall. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this and put it up here so it's closer to this color, and then kind of just blend them together so I get another admixture. So hopefully this edge can be taken down a little bit better. It's pretty dark over there anyway, so I could kind of just pull this May. across. Yeah, am I covering it again? No, you're good. Okay. Natasha said, I feel like May should meet my one-winged cockatoo. <laughs> I would love to. <laughs> um, Do you have a name for this painting yet? This painting? Yeah. Uh, no. Could it be One Winged Cockatoo? It, it could be. <laughs> I'll just name it Natasha's Cockatoo, and that would <laughs> confuse people in a lovely way, I think. What is the plan for the background? Um. It's not super solid. I think I mixed too much oil into it, but that's okay. So um, I'll probably do another pass on top of it um, and adjust the temperature a little bit in the photograph. It's a bit more cool. So I'm probably gonna just mix the same value, but like with more blue, um, have it be mostly opaque again, and then cover it again so it's nice and solid. Um, and so the temperature underneath, the warmer temperature underneath can play with the cooler one on top. And that should create a cool effect too. Mm. Um, and there's some smoke and stuff at the bottom, but we can get to that. So, yeah, that might actually be like the next, the next pass for this. Um, just like finishing the background. And Dee is asking, is this a one-winged angel? What is, if so, what is the meaning or symbolism? The symbolism is I like to paint wings. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I don't, I mean, I like one-winged angels because like, I like the asymmetry. It's more interesting um, than like purely symmetrical, like perfect imagery um i like to think of it more as like metamorphosis rather than just like it's like a it's an image of metamorphosis rather than um just like a state of being um and it's like it's not completely divine it's more rooted in like just natural humanity so it's kind of like this potential for change which mm. is cool um but mostly it just means I like to paint wings, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, interpret it how you will. Um. Do you enjoy telling people what the painting means to you, or would you much rather that they tell you what the painting means to them? Um, I like hearing what other people have to say and then first, and then maybe telling them how I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. um, 
because then it contributes to my perspective a bit, and I don't want to like, you know, um, affect their original take. And I think it's just it's more interesting that way um, to hear other people's perspectives rather than like immediately bulldoze them with your own. You know. Mm hmm. Yeah, I agree. Because, you know, in a painting, it's like, when, when I sign my name on a painting, mm -hmm. I have finished saying everything that I want to say. So the painting is right. now speaking for itself. Right. And if you, I found that if I tell someone what my intention behind the painting was, then it would, it sears how they see the painting. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I simply ask them open-endedly, like, what does this mean to you? Yeah. They might start describing things about the painting that I never even saw myself. <laughs> Which is there's right. a bit of a temptation there. It's like, oh yeah, of course I meant to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. But it's always just really cool. It's like, oh wow, oh wow. You know, and it kind of just Yeah. It makes the painting come come alive to me as the artist and you know, kind of reopens new channels for dialogue mm -hmm. with the piece that I made. It's nice when people see things that like you don't even see. Yeah. Like my friend really likes paying attention to the colors I use. Um, like sometimes, I'm, I mean, most of the time I'm just kind of like rendering as realistically as possible or just like have a random color scheme in my head based on like a scene or something that I'm thinking of. And they're like, wow, like the, the temperatures and the juxtaposition and like the, like all these things. And I'm like, that's great. Yeah, <laughs> that's like really great. Um, thank you. <laughs> and they're like, what? And I'm like, no, I'm gonna leave it there right there. <laughs> It's always cool when that works out. It is 9.30, by the way. Okay. How does that make you feel? Uh, uncomfortable. <laughs> but, um, it's okay. I, uh, I shouldn't have tried to do the shadows, but um, it's okay. Or, I mean, I don't think I planned for them, like, thoroughly enough. I mean, I can still work with this. It's like fine. I'll just take like another. I mean, we have like seven more passes on this, so it shouldn't be a problem. How many? I mean, like we still have like seven weeks after this, right? Oh, okay. So it's not like a problem, problem. Just like a not used to thinking in layers problem. <laughs> mm -hmm. Does anyone have any other questions for May? So I'm just using this admixture to um, kind of denote where a lot of the shadows are. Um, I'm not adding any like variation into them or anything. Just kind of marking out the areas. And then kind of blending back into the base as best I can to keep all the edges soft. Um, it's a little bit difficult because the paint I'm applying is like blending with what's still wet underneath. So that's like messing with the color a bit and like just how the paint is 
like sitting on top of other paint. But, um, it's okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Here's a question from Bill. Mm -hmm. Do you prefer working larger? Um, yeah, I do. Um, because it is easier on the eyes and the hands um, to like render large things. Um, like the shapes just aren't as small, like the details aren't as like tiny and hyper precise, but there is a lot of value in um, like having practice in uh, working on a much smaller scale. So you can really push yourself to like render as tightly and cleanly as possible because you literally have no room um, to mess up. So mm. like a lot of the portraits that I've been doing are like pretty large, like almost, almost life size. Um, and so, uh, and then in comparison to that, like my illustrations, like the head of a person is like two, two and a half inches like tall as compared to like, you know, like 10 or eight or something. So, mm -hmm. but there is some, there is a great sense of satisfaction in being able to render very small details <laughs> in an illustration. Um, even though like while you're doing it, it's like pain, quite painstaking, but um, the result's very nice. That's why it's good to have a balance of different things you're working on, I think, mm -hmm. for your skills and also like for your own well-being. <laughs> and like big pieces are just like more fun to show off, obviously. Like, look at this whole thing I made, you know, it's like four by three feet or something instead of like 18 by 24. But like if people get up close to like the smaller piece and they're like, wow, you like, you made that, you know, like tiny details or something, you're gonna be like, yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. I kind of like both. Um, I like the end result of both. I like the process of working on bigger things more. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's, like, not super unique, though. <laughs> but, like, most of my pieces are, um, on average, I'd say they're, like, two by three feet. The illustrations run a bit smaller, like 18 by 24. Portraits will be like two by four, four by three-ish. Why do you go smaller for your illustrations? Um, because like the purpose of illustrations is like, I mean, you're not like really making them to sell the original. They're like meant to be printed um, and distributed. And so usually they, you know, the upper cover is like, what, like mm -hmm. eight by 10 or something. Um, mm -hmm. So they get scaled down. And um, if you have like a much larger piece of work, it's gonna take a lot more magnitudes of scaling mm -hmm. to get it to the right size. And so that way, like you're crunching like a lot more like visual information. And so the disparity in resolution is gonna be quite large. And so you're gonna like lose a lot of information um, in that process. And so if you keep it small, then like you're rendering everything like much closer to scale, so you're not losing as much when you're scaling down. Mm -hmm. Here's a great question from Sarah Price. Mm -hmm. Are you working towards certain goals in your art career? Do you have an idea of what you want your career to be like for you? Um, I mean, I don't know how realistic it is. <laughs> um, I would love to do this full time, like get commissions basically for portraits and illustration, um, like for science fiction fantasy book covers or magazines or like promotional content or like concept art maybe, anything like that. That would be really amazing. And you know, just portraits on the side as like, I don't know, I think the portrait, I mean, I don't know too much about it, but like Kevin makes it seem super cool. Like you get to meet people and like, read them and interpret them and then paint them and like celebrate that you know that's like super cool mm. um so i would like to be in both of those industries full time but you know like i don't know how realistic that is <laughs> but that's like the dream dream so it's very realistic i mean you consider where you're starting at your age now versus, you know, Kevin hadn't even started, right? Yeah, at your age. I think he was 23 when he started. Yeah. Um. 
but even then, right? Like, yeah, it just goes to show that, like, the age, even even if you're older than 23, like, it it really doesn't make a difference. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but the level of skill that you already have, the prolific nature, like how how quickly you're just producing more and more work, mm. I think you're off to a great great start. Thank you. <laughs> By the way, um, Kevin just texted me. Yeah. He said, "Please tell May that I said." She did an incredible job of representing what Evolve and the Art Academy stand for tonight, and I couldn't be more proud. Aw, thanks, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Always good to hear that. Yeah. I'm glad you approve, as always. And Kevin approves, yay. Kevin approves. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> Bring out the choir. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Kevin's compliments are very, they, they only, they're only um, delivered when absolutely necessary. Yes. So when they are delivered, you know, it's like a big deal. Yes, um, Kevin understands the value of scarcity. Yes, yeah, supply and demand. You know? <laughs> so Think he, about it. Think yeah, he it. withholds his compliments in, until the, the very right moment. Yeah. Until your <laughs> he withholds until your imposter syndrome drives you literally insane, and then he's like, "Good job," and you're like, "Oh my god, I'm a person again." You know, it's crazy. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. Ashley says hi. Hi, Ashley. Yeah, I think that's like one of the cool things of you do you do miss this I would say with you know we've been talking a little bit about Art Academy versus Evolve and mm -hmm. you get to see a very personal side of Kevin um, in person I guess it's kind so of obvious true. but yeah. it's you know when he's doing his videos and stuff um, even on live you know you you see you do see a little bit of that human side but uh, the moments before <laughs> and after the live streams are. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, very fun, and yeah. May and I have been, we've been, yeah, May's always been around, even when she's not on screen during a lot of the live streams. And, and lurking in the time. shadows. Yes. <laughs> it was funny, actually, uh, Kevin, Kevin was <laughs> just hanging around before this live stream, and we were like, all right, Kevin, it's time for you to get out of here. <laughs> he didn't leave until right on the dot, 7 o'clock. So yeah. funny. Like it's my turn. It's my turn in front of the camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we will take the stage. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a it's like a coup. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, it's coming. <laughs> Slowly and surely. No, I just tease him. <laughs> Your phone like blows up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Shut it down right now. <laughs> um. But it is, it is funny, like, if Kevin was here watching us do this live stream right now, we would, oh we would kind of feel his pressure, uh, yeah, uh, presence. He's got a very commanding aura yeah. or energy, you could say. Even though he's probably watching us right now, he maybe is. chuckling to himself. Yeah. But uh, if he was here in the room, we, like, you could feel the, I don't know how to describe it, like, if you're the painting, tension. He's, <laughs> the tension, yeah, the bristling energy. Yeah, it's it's definitely like an invigorating feeling, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and it's also like a feeling of I want to give my best. You know? Yeah, you're definitely um, not resting on your laurels. <laughs> yeah, I used to be like so afraid when. Like, I mean, before the apprenticeship and stuff, when I was like a little middle schooler, um, like Kevin would come over and just like kind of stand behind me and like watch what I was doing, um, just like in classes. And I would literally just like freeze up because I was so afraid of doing something like wrong in front of him. 
Um, and then one time he called me out on it. He was just sitting behind me and I just like stopped. And he was like, "Are you? did you stop working because I'm behind you? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that was like the first like time we'd like kind of actually like broke the ice and, and like kind of be moved towards being friends instead of just like teacher, student. I just admitted I was terrified of him. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's funny because we really just put that pressure on ourselves. Like, yeah. Um, I think, you know, yeah. because Kevin has so much experience, he can see all of the decisions that we're making, you know, in the moment. And so there's, there's kind of that fear there. But mm -hmm. Kevin's not thinking, oh, they're messing up here, they're messing up here. He might be aware of it, but he's just, you know, just doing his thing. And, and yeah, so to kind of see that other side of Kevin and just know it's like, oh, it's, it's just Kevin. You know, he's just a great guy. Right. Um, yeah, I had I had a moment like that too, where mm -hmm. um, the Murphy scare. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad. But now we're making I'll just fun of him so much. <laughs> what? I feel like we're making fun of him. No, so I know much. we just do. Just because he's yeah. like not here. It is fun to make fun of him. <laughs> uh, but yeah, now sorry. now I'll just paint and do whatever, and he can stand behind me, and I'm like, what are you looking at? <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But everyone like watching was like used to watching Kevin or like like oh my god. <laughs> Wait, what? They're just like, what are they saying? Oh, what are we saying? Yeah, nah. How could they? To the gulag. Okay. Um. Uh, so yes, so Sarah is asking, is Kevin still doing classes at the art academy that we can come and join? Yes. yes. Um, you go. So he's, <laughs> during the summer, he has uh, Sundays open. Mm -hmm. There's a kid's class on Saturdays. But then his weekdays are full with the um, intensive program. So it's a little bit of a different, usually when it's not in the summer, it's usually uh, there's an opening on Wednesday, just Wednesday evening classes as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he's still going strong. Good night, Bill. Good night, Bill. <laughs> it's like 2.30 for you, man. Well, like 3, right? Uh, for Bill? Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. I think he's uh, elsewhere. But there are some people who've, yeah, who've been... That's crazy. ...who are watching into the wee hours of the night. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hope you get good rest after this. Whoever's out there. And not to get mushy, but I will say, after kind of teasing Kevin a little bit here, <laughs> you do get, you also get to see just how much Kevin really cares mm -hmm. um, in that in person setting. He's constantly doing other things for people and. Um, yeah, it's pretty sweet. Just random, random insert there. <laughs> no, for sure, though. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just very messily making an admixture. Yeah. Okay. What was that? I just like made an admixture with my brush between these two. It's mm. like close to the one I made, but the one I made it's like a little bit too cold, too cool, I think. So You're blocking the painting. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is cool. Annie said, that is beautiful, May. So glad to see this. Cool. It's my first live session. Just got my Evolve box. Whoa. Really excited and intimidated at the same time. <laughs> Looking forward to this adventure. That's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. I'm honored to be your first live stream. I'm, wow, you missed all of Kevin and you got me instead. Good for you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, um, congratulations. Um, yeah, good luck on your journey. Um, 
hope to see you back next in the in the following weeks and i hope you're enjoying this Trump to motion picture soundtrack. Um, <laughs> man, for, for that, whoever that username is, I would love to know what your name is. Because that is, <laughs> like, I don't know if I'm supposed to call you Trump for short or Trump to motion. Um, but yeah. Trump to motion. Um, he said, he or she said, that wing doesn't look easy. How do you feel about it, May? I'm excited. Um, I, yeah, I'm excited. It's, it's not... I, I think I'm excited to, to work on it in layers, um, kind of try that out because there is a very large value range in there, and and like if I was direct painting it like I would normally, it'd be very easy to mess it up. So, kind of excited to integrate this live streaming process into it. Um, there are a lot of really lovely colors in there, like that bright orange, like over the, mm -hmm. like that overlaps is really nice. Um, the way this diffuses out is super nice, and then it becomes like warmer, like this cooler purple becomes like reddish out here which is really nice and then like this photo is really nice because there's a lot of texture for like the kind of tattered edges of the feathers and so that'll be really fun to put in near the end mm -hmm. so yeah i'm excited um are you gonna keep it that's silly. like mildly transparent like that because i think mm -hmm. i can see the arm okay yeah cool that was the goal i mean i'll see i'll see how it goes if i don't like how it looks transparent as i'm doing it then i might switch it up but mm -hmm. Yeah. ED said, even at this stage, you can see the power of the muscles contrasted with the airiness of the wings. Yeah. That'll be fun. One of the things I like rendering the most is like, texture um mm. and then like the ideas that like texture conveys which is cool like in um that portrait i did of my friend like with the drape and everything like he's in jeans and like an aviator jacket with like all the fuzz and stuff and then like denim on the jacket too and he has like this kind of cotton wool sweater underneath and then the drapes are like all nice and velvet mm -hmm. um so it's like this cool contrast between like really casual clothing and then like an almost regal sort of like background um, yeah and also just kind of pushes the your ability to render like accurately and um like having something look like something is very different than having it feel like something when you look at it um and getting that kind of effect in your work is always very it's a fun challenge and it's very satisfying when you can pull it off mm -hmm. we're taking a close-up look of it right now this no the uh Oh, yeah, yeah. The painting you're describing. That's a good painting. The temperature shifts are nice, too. Thank you. That drape took 24 hours. How many? 24. 24. I was keeping track. Oh, God. Yeah, the temperatures in there are crazy, too, because I, I direct painted that, so there was no, like, mm. temperature underpainting. Um, it was just like one like really flat pass of like really modeled like greens and like oranges. Um, but like all the shadows, all the temperatures and the shadows are like, oh my gosh, that was crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was like four like long sessions, I think. And just like having to come back to it and like just committing in my head, like you're gonna render this. It was like, you know, mm. it's a decision. Yeah, I love the warm orangey reds on the left side. Thank you. Like some of the admixtures that I like slid into those gradients are like super bright red, like almost scarlet. That was mm -hmm. fun. And he said, this beautiful art is so inspiring. I'm really at the right, right place with the right art community. Yay. 
and she thought you were painting of, is it, uh, what's the name of this? Gabe. Gabe? Yeah. She thought it was a photo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I get that a lot with this painting, actually. Hmm. I think it's the drape, honestly. It's just like ridiculously rendered. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Thank you. About the drape, Becky is asking, did you write your color combinations down? Nope. Yes, I, I was thinking, I hope not. <laughs> I never do that. Yeah. I've never once done that. I look at the reference and I mix and I match and I match and I match and I match until it matches and that's kind of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, as Kevin likes to say, you know, he talks about this with flesh tones, but it, it applies to anything where um, like you can't take color combinations and then just throw them into another painting. Another painting mm -hmm. has a different environment, different lighting scenario, um, could have different colors, right? Even like yeah. within flesh tones, people have all different kinds of colors of skin. And so to try to you know, turn, turn it into a formula can be pretty disastrous. Mm -hmm. um, whereas if you simply just, you learn how to see Right. Then it just becomes so much easier and so much more simple. And then you don't have to overthink it. I don't like um like color combina like remembering like specific color combinations or anything, like how I made a color, because every time you go back to a painting, you will have experience working on that painting. And um you will have added more to that painting, like more context for the rest of the painting to go in on top of or like around or with or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and that helps educate you on um, like what you should do in your next step. And that includes like what colors to mix, even if it's for the same object, for the same area. Um, and so every time you go back, you're gonna have a better idea of what that color should be. And so by limiting yourself to a previous um, like perception of that color for that area or like whatever you're working on, will like, you know, kind of throws away that opportunity to learn and apply your learning during a painting. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Don't be afraid to have to remix colors. Um, it's yeah. a learning opportunity for sure. And it is 9.58. That really snuck up on, on us, May. Whoa. Sorry for not warning you earlier. That's okay. Um, now at 10 o'clock on the dot, mm -hmm. we're gonna do this raffle <laughs> okay. for the giveaway. Um, and so how that's, that's gonna work is I'm gonna pull up this little spin the wheel thing. We're gonna tap on the wheel and then it's gonna spin and choose a name. And then whether you're here in this live stream or not, we will contact you via email, get your shipping address, and then we will ship it out to you. Um, so there's that. And we're gonna do that right at 10 o'clock. So yeah, so, so May, if you, I don't know, where are you at right now? Um, there's still some stuff left to do in this pass, I think. But, okay. um, I mean, so, it's just more of the same, so I don't think you guys will miss anything. It's like softening some edges and, you know, hand brushing a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, so if your plan is to keep going, mm -hmm. like if you're committed to, to not stopping, then I can keep going for the live stream. But of course, no one, you know, we're just doing this, and so to have it, I think, yeah, to have this fully recorded live is, is fine, but... Okay. Um, I mean, I don't want to, like, hold anyone hostage, but I'm like... Yeah, to of course, no one, is, <laughs> no one is obligated to stay. I mean, that, yeah. hopefully that goes without saying. Yeah. <laughs> this is here for your entertainment and for just to help encourage, inspire. Right. How much longer would you guess? Um, I'm going to, like... Fan brush it right now and see where it is. Um, I think maybe just like another 10, 10 minutes, probably. Okay. Yeah. 
So I have to Easy. Like, yeah. Soften some things. And it is now 10 o'clock. Raffle time. Raffle time. So once again, um, this this painting um, off on the right side here, it's this uh, grayscale portrait of a woman with a sphere next to it. That was done in their just most recent live stream by Kevin Murphy. He was teaching us a lesson on how a sphere and a portrait are essentially the same thing when you break it down um, into just a simple process. And so we are now raffling this off um, in thanks to the people who watched. Um, and so, yeah, um, we're gonna ship this out to whoever receives this. And we, yeah, we had a, we had a link that we sent out um, that people could have could enter into, but of course those submissions are now closed. So here we go. <laughs> so hopefully this works. This is my first time trying this, but uh, I don't know if anyone can see my mouse. But it can trust that you're spitting. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, I'm gonna click the button. Three, two, one, go. It's spinning, and James Rebello. Awesome. All right, so James Rebello, we will we will uh, grab your email address. We will send you an email. Congratulations, you just won this painting. So we'll send it, send it in to you. We'll connect. I'll get your address and ship it out. But yeah, congratulations. You now own a Kevin Murphy original. Signed and everything. Yes. Yeah, if you note the, the signature on the side there. Let's see if I can actually pull this. Now that that's done, I'm gonna drag this up. Give everyone a little bit of a closer look. Ta-da. Yes, congratulations, James. Okay, and back to May. Any final burning questions? <laughs> should ask them this time because after this I'll actually be rendering and so I'll be much worse at talking. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and for those of you who are asking, so we sent out a link um, to enter into the raffle. And so I'm sorry if you, you missed that. Um, but this isn't the first time we have done uh, a giveaway raffle. So there might be more in the future. Let me see, catching up on some of the comments here. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for for May? I'm gonna be using this thing called a fan brush. Um, Kevin has lectured about this many times, so please don't ask me. No, I'm kidding. Um, basically. <laughs> Um, what I'm going to do is kind of just go over the painting in these sort of like circular motions and that'll help smooth out the texture of the paint. Um, it's not going to really move paint around or anything. Um, it's not going to like make gradients or change the shapes of um, like anything I put down. But it will just smooth the surface of the painting so it has a nicer finish. And I generally do this after like every painting session. Um, 
Yeah, that's especially important because I'm doing this in layers. So every layer um, depends on the one before it. So mm -hmm. actually, wait, one more thing. I do this a lot, by the way. Um, <laughs> Me too, actually. Yeah. Pro Guilty. Tip. Um, okay, so Sarah Price said, I heard Kevin say once that essentially nothing has a color. It's just a reflection of the color of the light that's shining on it. Yeah. That changed the way I saw color from then on. Yeah, absolutely. I learned that in school. But yeah, that is how it works. I think there's some more questions here. Yes, um, the painting straight ahead is another painting that May is currently working on. So, um, oh. yep. So we expect that that'll be worked on some more. So when we come back in for next week's live stream with May, um, that painting will look a little bit different. So I thought that'd be kind of cool to share in the background for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, all right. From Laurel May, how many passes do you think the wing will take? Uh, great question. I haven't really thought about it. Um, I'm going <laughs> to think about it right now out loud to you guys, okay? Um, so <laughs> I guess this one counts as one. Um, I'll probably do the sh Oh, yeah, three-hour sessions. That's not fun. Um, wait, I have to think about it a bit. So probably one to two passes for just the shadows. Um, and so that'll be like... A darker value across like the top and then also kind of probably graded into like that more orange and reddish stuff over that overlaps with the um with the shoulder in the back and then probably another pass for shadows that are further towards the left that are like further from the body um and then probably two passes for lights I mean, maybe one actually because like all the lights are kind of the same it's like two values of like whitish whitish and then like a lighter gray. So maybe just one for that. And that's like across the entire thing. So, mm -hmm. and so I don't know, was that, that was like three or four, I guess. Cool. Yeah. However many it takes. Mm -hmm. um, here's another question from Sarah Price. Do you still get intimidated by paintings or do you feel confident enough now that you know you can work out any hurdles you come to? I'm pretty confident. Um, usually when I see challenging subjects, I'm more excited to figure out how to, um, how to render them or like challenge myself to render them as tightly as possible rather than intimidated by their complexity or detail. Um, and that just definitely just comes with experience, um, with rendering things, with getting through paintings. Um, and like learning during the process of a painting instead of kind of, kind of just letting it like come at you during the process. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't really get intimidated, I think. Um, and I know I'm like, I'm willing to put in however much time, however many passes, however many redos of mixing a color it takes to get something to be the way I want it to be. So um, that's not like, an aversive incentive either where I'm like, oh, I don't want to work on this because it's going to take so many passes or like so many colors or whatever. Um, no, I think I, I like the process of kind of working on yeah. anything, especially if it's complicated. I just need, I'm just going to do one more passive with a fan brush. If I can find one, that would be nice. Oh yeah, here. Um, and instead of like the circular motions, I'm just going to pull everything down in the same direction. Um, to make the whole thing a lot more even overall. Mm -hmm. And just another layer of like smoothing things out. Yeah, and Annie asked, is, is it like a blending brush technique? And so right now she's not blending edges together. She's simply smoothening out the, the surface. surface. So yeah. if, if you think about the painting, like it's a three dimensional Topographical. I don't even know if that's the right way to say it. It's like a like a map with like a three D map, right? Because if you turn that painting on its side, there's some sections are have a little bit more density than others, and so here she's smoothening all of that out so that the painting has the same sort of sheen right. over everything, and so um, that way you're not going to see like brush brush marks as easily, and you can really capture the whole image um, much more easily, and um, just helps smoothen out all that density and it makes the next process much, much easier. Yeah, and it photographs better too. Um, 
because there's like less unevenness, like catching light from different angles and stuff like that. So. Mm -hmm. Generally good um, final step to do. Not necessary in all cases, but yeah. Question from Eddie. Do you get repetitive strain injury or carpal tunnel syndrome or anything like that, please? I'm 19, hopefully not yet. <laughs> um, I have gotten like kind of soreness like in my right middle finger like knuckle, but that usually happens like if I've been painting for like a really long time, like at least like 10 hours or something. Mm -hmm. Or if I've been like working on like a transfer for like over two hours, because you have to like press down. At least like I tend to press down really hard um, with my pencil. Um, so that gets, so that's like, so yeah, I guess I do get a little bit of that. But um, it's not like chronic or anything yet. And um, it's definitely manageable. I kind of just like rub it out a little bit afterwards. Or um, Kevin has suggested that I take like ibuprofen before starting like a really long session of anything. So. Mm. Yeah, definitely, if you get that though, something to watch out for, um, not good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, anything else? Um, I think that's it, May. Very cool. Okay, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, thank you everyone so much for coming out. Thank you for supporting May and her first live stream. May, you've done an awesome job. Thank you for entertaining all of us, mm, um, including me. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to keep doing these with you. and Thank you. <laughs> it's going to be fun. I'm really mm -hmm. excited. This is a great start to this painting. Mm -hmm. uh, Linda said, May, so impressed. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Great to have your apprentice live, Kevin. Thank you, May. Thank you, May. I'll go back and watch what I missed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks, May. You did wonderful. Thank Aww. you, May and Daniel. This has been great. <laughs> um, yeah, much love. All right. Yay. Thank you, everyone. All right. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Thanks Sleep for well. staying. Mm -hmm. yeah.